Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. This is Band from Ringside. Tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast, we have your 2021 Elimination Chamber recap. The Wednesday Night Wars. Uh, there's some injuries in NJPW we got to cover. Uh, Big Show Paul White joins AEW. That and a whole bunch more tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast. Ditch that nine to five. It's time to feel alive. Hello, Marks, and welcome to the Band for Ringside podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bill Vagy, a.k.a. Heat Seeking Missile. And out there in Edwardsville, <laughs> Illinois, we have Two Beer, Zach Pullman. What's going on, Two Beer? <laughs> oh, man, I uh, am having a terrible time. I legitimately think that uh, I gave myself a doubt. Uh, and if you want to look up the... the um, the actual like uh, reasons one gets gout, I check every box. Yes, so, yeah. I've, I've had it before, and it sucks. it's the exact same thing. It's like, uh, well, what is it? Is it? Uh, it's beer and whiskey, and I think asparagus is one of the ones too. I think. Yeah, being overweight, drinking well, alcohol. Sure. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's I'm just laid up with the gout. Not really laid up. I'm just not want to do anything. It fucking sucks though. That is why they call it the disease of kings, though. Which is yeah. probably the I'm best. That's the AKA for gout. <laughs> I am your host, Gout, AKA the disease of kings. <laughs> and sitting to my left, we have Jason Cornelius Bell. What's going on, JCB? Well, I was the bow heads as I read from the latest edition of the Band from Ringside podcast, volume 194, chapter 3, verse 14. And the good smart saith, hashtag boo the heels. It is all good, baby. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat. Big shout out to uh, Lucha Chris. Uh, got his Twitch channel up. I believe it's uh, 3013 Twitch. Uh, so if you are on Twitch, check my boy out. He's uh, He threw up some uh, old um, banged out BFR uh, episodes to kind of test the uh, the Twitch channel. So that was cool to look at, trying to go back and uh, reminisce a little bit. Those were fun to do. Yeah, before uh, times changed a little bit. So yeah. Go find him on, U- uh, or uh, go find him on-, on YouTube. But our uh, YouTube. Uh, or. Murray's or Lucha Chris's, Chris's uh, Twitch, Twitch channel. channel, whichever one, uh, both available for you to check out. So, yeah, big shout out to uh, Lucha Chris. Good shit, brother. Uh, we are coming at you from, it's nice outside, man. Yeah, it's finally, it's finally good <laughs> weather. In comparison to what we've been having. South City, St. Louis. As always, we got a bunch of stuff to get to. No do-over tonight, but I think we are going to be doing one next week. Probably, Before we, uh, I don't know. I was going to say, because it's, there, next week is like a really big week. Like March third, next week is like where all wrestling worlds collide. There's so much shit going on. It's not even just on this side upon the pond, on the other side. We'll, as well see. We'll let you know on Twitter uh, at BFR Pod. Re- you'll find all of us there. Uh, Jason, tell us about F and B Eatery. F and B Eatery. You're on the corner of 3453 Southampton and Marquette, home of the greatest smash burger you've never heard of. So let's take care of that problem. Slide on in. Hell, get a gift card, then go on in, grab you a couple of smash burgers, take the kids with you. Like Bill said, it is nice outside. It is a good time to go out, stretch your legs, get some fresh air, and while you do it, feed the fam. Slide on in to F or B Eerie, tell them the band from Ringside sent you. And I'll also tell you about Bill's Beard Company, which is the it's a it's a whole smorgasbord of things. It is a uh, beard nice. oil, it is beard balm, it is beard shampoo, it is also shower bombs and bath bombs for uh, the lady in your life, or if you're a gentleman and you just feel like uh, 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 pampering yourself, I use the shower bombs all the time. I use the sprays all the time. You know, it's kind of like that poopery, you know, if you don't feel like leaving that in there for your roommate, roommate and or significant other. Check out Beard Bill's Beard Company. She is selling the shit out of these. Uh, all the testimonials are great. Uh, you can slide into my DMs at BFR Bill, and I'll make sure we ship it all over the world for free. Without further ado, let's get to that three count. One, two, three. JCB, kick it off. I said JCB, kick it off. Awesome! 
<laughs> There's oh, the takeaway no. from the elimination chamber. We waited, we waited, we waited, and it finally happened. The Miz cashes in the money in the bank briefcase successfully this time around with the little I had almost forgotten. <laughs> with a little assist from one Bobby Lashley, my man Bobby Lashley takes out Drew McIntyre, throws him in the ring, and The Miz proceeds to seal the deal and is now your new WWE champion. Um, myself, personally, I have no problem with this. Um, it's been happening for a while. The more and more I look ahead where you see Miz and misses a new season that's coming out the day after WrestleMania. If you kind of looked and took a look around the the lay of the land, so to speak, it, this kind of was going to make sense. And if there was the time to do it, this was the time to pull the trigger. So, like I said, for me, the biggest takeaway from Elimination Chamber easily is Miz winning the, uh, the WWE title on the opposite side, the SmackDown side. Um... I guess the biggest takeaway for me is Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns finally had the match I was kind of waiting for, albeit extremely short. Um, I thought that they would give us, a, throw us a little bone and have that match happen a little later on. But in true heel fashion, Roman comes out immediately and proceeds to lay the smackdown on Daniel Bryan. So then he retains and, of course, Edge comes out, spears the dog shit out of Roman Reigns and points to the WrestleMania side. So at least on one side of the ledger, you have a main event on the SmackDown side, Ed ver- Edge versus Roman Reigns. On the Raw side, you have one Miz defending the title against Bobby Lashley on Monday night. Um, I'll be very curious to see if Drew McIntyre won't come out, but we can discuss that at a little point, a later point. But like I said, for me, the, the biggest takeaway was the Miz finally doing the deal and bringing home the WWE title. Two beer. What's your biggest takeaway? Oh yeah, I mean definitely that for sure. It. Uh, God, I've been complaining about the uh, and the Miz for like a while, like, and I just feel like they did it intentionally to me. It was a personal attack. Uh, I don't know, man. I just uh, the pay per view itself um, was pretty watchable. Uh, so um, the elimination chamber matches were fun, uh, especially the SmackDown one. I really like that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, this just uh, I don't like it. And it's not like because I don't like the Miz or anything, even though I, I don't think he's a great wrestler or anything. It's just God of all the things to do. It just doesn't seem like it, but at least, I mean, there's no fans, so I guess you can just kind of throw shit against the wall. That's just kind of what it seems like, throwing shit against the wall. Uh, I kind of expected Lashley to take it from him. Maybe I'm putting the card ahead of the horse here, but I kind of expected Lashley to take it from him the next night, or maybe Drew to take it the next night. I don't know. But um, at least, like, the briefcase is done, and we can get somebody else on it uh, next time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I forgot... The elimination period were, were Sunday, and I watched it Monday, and I had a good time with the show. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, I, I agree. It was immensely watchable for me. The Elimination Chamber matches are always fun. I think the, I, I think that the reason they kept the Daniel Bryan-Roman Reigns match short, because that is a very bankable match, hopefully that plots a couple seeds for the storyline. Maybe a SummerSlam match between Daniel O'Brien and Roman Reigns would be something that like I said, would be very bankable in a main event style match. Um, everything that you said was true. Uh, uh, to t- talk about The Miz, a few thoughts here. I mean, when it happened, you certainly don't want a champion who has been as good as Drew and somebody that they've really put a lot of time into as Drew McIntyre to lose to somebody who has been basically an afterthought on Raw has made to look. I mean, how many fucking handicap matches have the Miz and Morrison lost? Lost, like not yeah. even not even just win cheap, but they lose the handicap match to uh, you know Lashley or Keith Lee or you know whoever the fuck else Braun Strowman, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre. Yeah, Drew McIntyre. Thank you. Um, it's very predictable, though. 
Vince knows that he's a star. He's a very hateable heel. Uh, he, he's a good heel. I'm not saying he's a bad heel. I think he's a good heel. I think he's a good wrestler. I would have liked to have seen them put a little bit more behind him into his championship win. All that being said, he is not going to keep that title for very long. Miz will not have that title going into WrestleMania. And if you motherfuckers are out there and you feel like trolling me, Go ahead and take a clip of me saying that, and then if he main events WrestleMania, if he <laughs> takes the championship in WrestleMania, come at me on Twitter, and I'll probably block you. Um, <laughs> Dude, I can imagine. Can you imagine? No. Like, uh, I mean, Drew, WrestleMania is already shaping up okay. to be pretty ho-hum. Okay. Like, Drew, can you imagine? Drew yes, versus, I can. Drew versus Miz is not – no, I think – I'll be surprised if it's not Drew versus Lashley. I'll be surprised if it's not a triple threat. Ooh, well, now, you're speaking, now you're speaking about that. <laughs> no, I don't you want to a, be a triple threat. You mean a handicap match? You mean a handicap match? Morrison? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, oh, yeah, that did happen this year. Did they have Miz and Morrison fight somebody for the belt where if Miz and Morrison won, they would be double? That was Drew. They absolutely did. Yeah. That was Drew. Was I, that? Thought it was, I thought it was Braun. Yeah, it was Braun. It was Braun. Yeah, it you're was right. Braun. It was yeah, right. Okay. You're right. Um, I'll be shocked if Lashley isn't in a match with Drew McIntyre. I'll put it that way at WrestleMania. I hope it's McIntyre versus Lashley. Let's say this. I mean, we've talked about Lashley a lot in the weeks leading up to here about how they've been making him look strong as fuck, and that's what you do to a challenger. I pre I I proposed that I thought they were doing it so that he'd go up against Brock Lesnar. Which could happen. It could happen. Miz versus Drew if they think that's money, uh, I don't think they do. But I think I tr- in this scenario, I've tried to lower myself to think the way Vince thinks. Vince thinks big picture. Vince thinks about what will lead into. He books the poster. Okay. This poster I'm seeing about USA. I'm not thinking about WrestleMania. It, it kind of leads into it. But Miz and, Miz and Mrs. is, is there. I guess after Total Bellas is their next biggest television show that they have. I will be really surprised if The Miz isn't the champion going into WrestleMania. Now, who the challenger or challengers are, I'm not sure. But I will be really surprised if he's not the champion going in. How many more Raws do we have before WrestleMania? Ooh. Um... Probably too what? many and not enough. At the same time. <laughs> well, I was probably, like, say probably like five. You got all of March, oh. so that's four. Um, this is the end of the month for February five. What four five? I would say at least five. With a pay per view thrown in, I think that's that the pay per view. If they don't do it, where Drew interferes. In that match on Monday night, I would expect Lashley to win. Then you would have the rematch with Drew versus Lashley at Fastlane. Flip a coin. You got one. To me, it's one of three options. You can go Drew versus Lashley. You can go Lashley. It's April 10th. April 10th is WrestleMania. You can go Lashley versus Miz, or you could do the triple threat. I imagine that it. See, I I just assume that it would be off of him on Monday. Maybe they'll do it next Monday, or maybe they'll just do it at Fastlane. Basically, they went Drew carrying it into WrestleMania. No, because I just wanted. I think this something is, different. I think know? this is the time that they're going to kind of reward Drew for hard work carrying the uh, like with time off. Not even that. I'm just saying that him winning the. The title over Brock Lesnar was supposed to happen with fans last year, and it didn't. It, as it stands oh, right see. now, so him winning, right, him winning the title with fans, right. I got you. As it stands right yeah. now, it's going to be 25000 have, have Lashley take it off of Miz and have, have Drew, Drew chase. chase yeah. And then take it off of uh, Lashley at uh, WrestleMania in front of fans. So they're, you know. I mean, Drew's been great, like, for sure. Like, they've done a good job with him, but they've also done a good job with Lashley, and her business is a good act. Like, no, I mean, dude. I, don't want, I don't want Lashley to, like, take it just to, 
lose to Drew at WrestleMania, right? Uh, Not at but, all, I mean, but I, I mean, see, I, I can see it happening. But. I could totally see it happening. And only, the only reason I would even give that Lashley transitional run a pass is I remember the Bobby Sisters uh, segments that we ran down or the obstacle course with Sami Zayn. Bobby Lashley has come a long way creatively to where this is the Bobby Lashley that I was looking for when he came back from uh, Impact or whatever the case may be. If Bobby Lashley wins immediately on Monday, Brock Lesnar, I'm saying, is in play because that that gives you a month to get Brock Lesnar ready to go. And be, and re- look, this is the this is the match that he wanted. He being Bobby Lashley, he came back and said he wanted Brock Lesnar. Brock won't probably do this a, not in front of fans a second time around. So if you're going to get Brock Lesnar, and that's an if, Bobby Lashley wins, then Brock Lesnar's in play. If he doesn't, then this is a, a no and void conversation. Okay, uh, any other any other uh, points of conversation that you'd like to uh, talk about here about Elimination Chamber? Uh, we didn't get the edge um Roman thing. Oh yeah. So. Thank you. Sorry. I just got distracted by a text message. I'm sorry guys if I'm not No, you're rude. you're absolutely fine. Uh that uh so we did get like this, you know his decision, right? He decided. Mm-hmm. I saw uh somebody posted a funny meme on Friends of BFR that was uh <laughs> please pick me before Goldberg picks me and I was like, Oh, thank God, because 'cause we're probably already getting like Randy Orton and the fiend at WrestleMania again. Yeah, I don't um, think that's a probably. So, yeah. Yeah. So, like, a Goldberg, please, no. Like, I don't need any of him unless he fights Riddle and Riddle retires him. <laughs> but uh, it's probably not going to happen either. Yeah, uh, Riddle won the... Uh... Goldberg's not in play for WrestleMania, is he? I feel like he's always in play. Yeah, um, I was going to say, I'm, I'm with two beer on this one, but just quickly thinking about the, the top names. I can't think about anybody. Braun is going to go against Shane, it looks like now. Yeah. AJ needs a dance partner. So how do you feel about Edge taking over, taking on Roman Reigns? I mean, that's the biggest money match. That's going to be the month. That's going to be the main Probably event the of night two. Yeah, that would be the Sunday uh, main event, I would assume. Uh, um, I, yeah, that would be really it would shocking. Be, yeah, would be, I would be stunned if it was came on Saturday night instead right. of day one instead of day two. Um no problem with it. Kind of saw it coming a little bit, especially, you know, when Edge took the spear on Friday night again, uh, leading into the elimination chamber where Roman stood tall. It was good to see Edge kind of, you know, answer the call and, you know, do the obligatory point to the WrestleMania sign. Now you got a month to kind of build this thing up, you know, let Paul be Paul, you know, let him work his uh, his magic. Um, Edge is already a, a solid talker, obviously. Roman is going to be under the microscope again a little bit because Roman has done well in this heel run talking, but Edge is, is another step up, you know what I'm saying? So let's see how he can keep up verbally. The match is going to take care of itself. The build is what I'm worried about because you got a month to possibly screw this thing up. When you say the match is going to take care of itself, do you mean that Roman's going to be wrestling and it's just going to be okay no matter what? For me, there's enough interest to where this could be. This is one of the few times I can possibly see Roman losing. I don't think it would happen, but it could happen. So that piques my interest a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the verbal jousting between Edge and Paul, I'm looking forward to that. I want to see how Roman Reigns holds up to that heat because that's a month of, like I said, being on uh, on SmackDown where we've said it before on BFR. Roman Reigns, if there is one weakness to Roman Reigns, it's the microphone. And he's done well coming back as a heel I mean, handling his business. If that's true, then why at the Beefers do we call the promo of the year award the Roman Reigns award? <laughs> he Zach. damn the dude almost died a couple times, Zach. Zach. No, but he, he won twice. <laughs> he's won twice. That's true. He's won two out of the four Beefers. He's won Beefer, or promo, he's won of, the promo of the year. Okay. It's the Roman Reigns award. Considering it is the Roman Reigns Award, I would like to go back and let's review why he won it <laughs> versus okay. him just knocking it out of the park, John Moxley style. Zach, you're fine with Edge taking on Roman, or do you think that was the best move? 
yeah, that's what I preferred, and that's what I thought would happen. It seemed like the logical thing to do, because especially because if you look at the SmackDown side, you don't have any credible challengers whatsoever. Um, you know, they kind of built up Cesaro a little bit. Daniel Bryan is always kind of there, um, but like he's been, you know, jobbing to a lot of guys, uh, putting them over, and uh, Kevin Owens have done like three, four times. Um, so really, it's kind of the ideal move. You stole my Cesaro thunder. If there was, and I said it last week, obviously, to me that was that was the match. I mean, especially the way it kind of ended so quickly with Daniel Bryan and Roman. I'm not saying it. I I agree with Bill in the sense that it, if this match is going to be a full blown match the next time around, this was Seeds Planet. So be it. I'm just disappointed, man. I mean. Cesaro stole the fucking show. I'm sorry. You can call me what you want at this point. I, and it's not even the fact that I picked Cesaro to win the match. I mean, you can go back and watch this match again. Cesaro stole the show. And the fact Doing that... pull-ups, like... On, yeah, that, case, that's what... And like, I was yeah. thinking to myself, watch this Joker do some pull-ups. And the sure as shit, he's doing pull-ups. He swung Baron Corbin's 300-pound dumbass around. You know, that ain't shit ain't easy. If you're going to do this, I mean, Daniel Bryan is a made man at this point, more than made. Cesaro ain't even close. I mean. <sighs> yeah, but it does, does it do more for Cesaro to just get squashed by Roman Reigns after if, he wins the elimination? If chamber? you're going to play the the Roman Reigns rub, see Buddy Murphy, okay, then let Cesaro go in there and take his licks. What happened to Buddy Murphy? Exactly. Uh, Seth Rollins had to go on paternity leave, so therefore he's in catering. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, you know, you, Jason, you mentioned predictions. Um, oh, somebody won this week in predictions. <laughs> I'd say, considering the, the little Cheshire grin on your face, I'm going to go ahead and say it's not me. Oh, am I grinning? A little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I won. I had 11 points. 11 points? There was only four matches or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't act like the Elimination <laughs> Chamber was like 15 <laughs> points or some nonsense. Uh, well, nobody. Well, you guys both picked Cesaro, but at least I had Dana Brain second. We all picked McIntyre. But both you guys picked Rizzle, Riddle with 0% chance, or the 0 points. For the U.S. Yeah. Time. Okay, well, it should, yeah. should really be tossed out because Keith Lee wasn't even the match. Stole and I my think, thunder. I think the whole thing was them just getting the belt off Lashley. Exactly. And it almost didn't even matter who it went to. Well, I'm not taking it off the board. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Just know, <laughs> okay, if Keith Lee was in that match, we got a different story. This could be your WrestleMania match. It could be the fast lane match. We, you don't know. First things first, Keith Lee's got to come back and be healthy. But, yeah, um, I don't have a problem with, especially the way things are starting to unfold. Riddle could have the U.S. title for all I'm concerned. Knock yourself out. It's, it's, not, like the, it's not like the fucking U.S. title has meant anything in any bit of time at all i mean ever since fucking ezekiel washington had it um it's like ezekiel washington's probably listening to this podcast me like man i'm fucking catching strays over here what the who fuck? the fuck is ezekiel washington <laughs> big black dude no you mean ezekiel jackson oh yes my bad he was in the core yeah yeah <laughs> all the black guys look alike well, there is no Ezekiel Washington, so he doesn't look like anybody. I'm just—he was just a black guy with a fucking <laughs> Got him. stop, stop. <laughs> he was thinking, he was thinking Booker T, and then he got mixed up with Booker T Washington. What's his name? Ezekiel Obama or something? <laughs> yeah, bring the big black guy on over. It's time for a scene. Who are you talking about? Ezekiel O'Neal. You knew who I was talking about. It's not Ezekiel Washington. Oh man, I would have lost that bet. Point is. <laughs> U.S. style doesn't mean shit. Doesn't mean shit. Hasn't been meant shit for a while. All right. Uh, anything else that we want to talk about? Um, Shayna Baszler? Yeah. Um, Shayna Baszler or Nia Jax? Kind of saw that one coming. Nia I think Jax this... was a devastating, devastating leg <laughs> job. Just holy fucking shit. <laughs> so uh, we were at t- I went to Tinder's to, uh, to watch the <laughs> As soon as she did that, I looked over to Timber and I, 
<laughs> I'm gonna go be a tender. I'm like, man, Bill's somewhere having a heart attack. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> I wasn't watching it that point. No. Thank God, I just saw it today. Uh, not much to say there, though. No, it's it's a cheap way to get Sasha to kind of be heelish. I think, obviously, I think that's the way they're going to go. And if you're going to do the classic heel versus face, Sasha to me is a natural heel. You can play into that. Not saying that Bianca hasn't been a heel before, but I think it, with the Bianca Belair story coming to this point, it would be impossible for be, her to be a heel. Totally agree. Any thoughts, Zach? Yeah, um, like, no, sorry. I just don't. <laughs> I can't care. <laughs> All right, let's get to the two count. <laughs> <laughs> this is your champion. That's right. <laughs> Respect your champion. <laughs> Respect your champion. Two beer. What's the two count? Uh, two count. Uh, Wednesday night wars. Kind of as per usual. I mean, we're going to be in this for a while. I think um, it seems like it's sticking around. Yeah, uh, most- that's that two count staple, boy. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's fun. I love Wednesday nights, though. I'll admit, Wednesday nights are starting to get tough. It's really the only night that I like. I'm like, I have to get in front of the TV to watch wrestling like tonight, like unless there's like a big show or something. But you two know, beer, other stuff are, I can just catch up. Two beer. Just a, a quick side note: Are you off on Wednesdays or no? No, I work, so I'm, okay. I'm behind. So, so you stack like, like I, me. I work okay. and then yeah, I work and then I come home and watch it late. Okay. But I still like watch it that night before I go to bed. Well, you, you know, because uh, friend of the show. Michael Wallace Seals is over here balling out of control watching both shows at the same time. I know this one over here to my right, uh, he watches, he jumps back and forth, which is, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, I just feel like shit will get lost in translation to me. You don't miss that much. I, I, dude, I hear you, but I just, I like to just watch it. I mean, do you, have, start to do you have to watch the full five minutes of Moxley versus Ziggler's little brother? Do you have, like, is it necessary to watch the full five minutes? No, I mean, I mean know, it might I'm... be necessary for you. I know that you watch everything, <laughs> like, in full. I know you sleep, like, three hours a day. Five a day. I was proud of myself. No, I'm go- Ryan Nemeth, all bullshit aside, he that... looks like Dolph just a little taller, maybe, you know, possibly stronger. Sure. Yeah, but... I mean, I, I, I go, like, uh, usually the full show because, like, I do, especially for – some AEW, I, they tend to have a more dense show because they try to tell a whole lot of stories. Mm-hmm. NXT, sometimes I will, like, I'll have it on maybe the next morning. I can't stay up all night, so I throw it on the yeah, Hulu version. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, doing laundry and stuff. Because, like, same way it's am. more formulaic. You totally, I can totally predict what happens on an NXT show. Maybe not the exact angles, but, like, just, like, the time and commercial breaks and stuff. It's all just very formulaic. Uh, but anyway... Um, the, uh, shows last night were pretty good. The, um, you know, we're just for AW, we're just building, uh, to revolution. So, um, you know, you mentioned Moxley and Nemeth, they kicked off the show. Uh, it wasn't really about that. That was about the promo after it was about Moxley, you know, talking about the exploding barbed wire death match that's going to happen, which, you know, I was thinking about this and I remember there being like some vitriol about if this was in WWE you guys can shit on it. But I think maybe those folks like might not have just seen a bar bar exploding death match, which is like totally understandable. Cause it's like a super niche thing because it sounds like the whole eye for an eye thing or like the, the asylum match or it just sounds like a gimmick and it is a gimmick, but it's like a gimmick that's rooted in like kind of Japanese wrestling. So I don't know. Uh, I think, him doing that Kenny Omega bit with him building whatever murder weapons in the thing, like Undertaker and his like wood shop making caskets, like <laughs> that was you know working towards it, I guess. But really, yeah, this whole show is just about building uh, to the pay per view, and that is the the main ticket. Because outside of everything else, I mean, it's going to be a really good show, but that's like the marquee match, um, far and away. Big time. Uh, what do you think about that, Jason? Um, the Moxley promo was, was solid as usual. I mean, it basically is letting you know that nothing is going to left to be left on the table. All Your imagination is left to run wild at that point. Like I said, for me, I've never seen a death match. I guess that's going to be my homework tonight is 
go get really baked and try not to uh, lose my lunch on watching this death Dude, match. That's actually that's actually the best way to do it. The other night, I so Dexter and I have been watching one like every night before we go to bed. What? And yeah, he loves them. Like the other night, we watched one where there was a piranha tank in the middle of the ring. Awesome. The guys wrestling were not that great, but the psychology was really fun. And um, anyway, uh, but that's not one to watch. <laughs> <laughs> that's not one to watch. Although do watch it, but just like uh, really, you want to look at like Avoid the uh, piranhas. Got it. Cactus Jack and Terry Funk, Terry Funk and Onita, uh, those guys in like ninety five, ninety four, like early nineties, like uh, King of Death match stuff. Like there's some good stuff out there. Okay, I mean, like I said, for me the death match thing is is not my bag, baby. It's just I don't mind a little color, but I mean, if I'll say like this when. Cody and Dustin had their match and Dustin was bleeding like a stuck pig. I know Bill, we talked about it afterwards on the pod where it was like, it was too much. It was too much. And I was, we were all there. We were all freaking out. Right. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, see, don't get me wrong. Dustin was bleeding like nobody's business. Okay. It to the point where it was, it made me concerned. I wasn't necessarily, you know, screaming stop the match, but it was definitely a lot of fucking blood. I don't see where this couldn't and shouldn't be the same thing, especially when it's not going to be, well, it is always everything's on pay-per-view, so we can take that away. Yeah, I'm just, I'm expecting, like, a really bloody battle, and, and Moxley did nothing to dissuade me from thinking otherwise. So, yeah, the Moxley promo was great. The match was, meh, it's okay. You know, great for Ryan Nemeth. Come on out, get your ass handed to you in five minutes, and feel free to uh, go get your parting gift in the back. But to me, like I said, this was more about Moxley's promo than anything else. And like I said, I guess I'm just going to have to go home and watch this death match and just at least get some sort of idea what the fuck I'm getting ready to jump into because, like I said, this – this don't sound like anything I would want to watch to begin with, number one and number two. I will still adamantly say if this was WWE, we would be having a field day with it. Uh, so bookending the show, like we kind of jump to the end. I mean, there's stuff we can talk about in the middle. If you guys want the bookending the show, we've got uh, Phoenix and Lance Archer in kind of the match of the week that I saw in contending for a spot in the ladder match for the uh, TNT title shot. So uh, this match was bonkers. Like, I mean, just like you would expect uh, from both guys, really, because Lance Archer, despite his size, just flies like he shouldn't, you know, like maybe if the Undertaker was like around nowadays, like he might be doing Spanish flies, like what, you know, whenever he's like younger. Lance Archer's a spring chicken, by the way, but, um, you know, maybe he'd be, doing a moonsault off the ropes. I don't know. He was a pretty good athlete when he was younger, but um, these guys just tore down the house, and it was awesome. And we have Lance Archer going, which, you know, you need a big base usually in a ladder match to kind of catch guys and throw them around. But uh, Jesus Christ, like, can you, like, Ray Phoenix, like, not in this ladder match. That's a huge bummer. (laughs) But maybe it's good for his body. I don't know. Um, (laughs) But uh, that was fun. I thought about this match i've watched this match twice now this match fucking ruled this is the type of stuff that i wanted from aew when aew came as the alternative to wwe is that i don't want a schmoz at the end of the show i want a match between two guys i've never even considered fighting against each other phoenix and lance archer having just a barn burner, tearing the house down, almost going the 20-minute time limit. You know, it was in play. And Archer going over clean. That's fucking wrestling, man. Like, that's what I... That, that was a pay-per-view level match on a, on a Wednesday night that between... Like I said, between two guys that I've never even thought about fighting each other. And that was fun. It was a ton of fun. Yeah, I was going to say that this was the, one of the few times where... I like both guys, and I'm just kind of like, man, this sucks. You know, it's a great match, but I, you know, I, I would rather selfishly see both guys in this. I was match. legit surprised that Archer won. Very. I'm not even gonna lie. I, I really thought they would go with Ray Phoenix just for the fact that it's Phoenix. It's a ladder match. I He's mean, a bigger star. 
But uh, then in the, it, I would agree with that. But then kudos where you're at least putting Lance Archer back to a, a spot where I think he should be. This feels a little Mick Hardish because it's for the TNT title, so be it. But I think Lance Archer is is a bona fide superstar, and the more and more you get him out there to have him in play, is the more and more I think people will start to agree with that. But every main event, well, yeah. every main event doesn't have to have uh, Moxley or Jericho Agreed. in it. Agreed. So it was nice seeing two guys that you don't see in that main event slot have just a normal match. I mean, as normal as that match was, but I mean, that's it's a straight up match between two guys that they established a bit of a disliking for each other, or there there was a little bit of beef earlier in the show, and then they went out and they, you know, they fought like it. Great, I loved it. What are you going to say, T-Bear? Yeah, it was great. I was just going to say they they do a good job with Archer. Like he's not protected like to the level of like Lashley, like in WWE as a big man, but they do a good job like protecting him. He doesn't lose much. And they keep him fresh. And with Phoenix, like, I I was also very surprised that Archer won. But, like, with Phoenix, like, the dude is so dynamic. He could lose every single match. And it would take, like, 30 matches before I even realized he lost. Yeah. Like, you know, all of them. Because he's just so good and he's going to get so over. Like, it almost doesn't matter um, if he loses. But, uh, but yeah, I, I definitely want both of these guys. The Spanish fly spot and when Phoenix walked the rope and kicked Lance Archer – were just ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. him diving into him being Phoenix diving into the stands on a suicide dive is not even you know like oh shit anymore. It's now become commonplace. The biggest thing with that yeah. was <laughs> the biggest thing with that one was last or last night he landed on his feet after the fact. I'm just like, dude, this motherfucker is out of control. I agree with totally what you guys are saying. Phoenix is over. Okay, he can lose 30 matches, like you said, and still would be okay. Lance Archer, I think, kind of needs this little nudge. Now, the biggest question to me is, is this, are we going to see all the entrants uh, coming have, from have these? Have matches? Have matches, or is there going to be a surprise entrance? Have they named anybody else? Excalibur said something last night, and I kind of caught it, where he was like, these – I can't remember how exactly he said it, but basically these were the the known entrants for this. I think whenever match. they asked him, I think they asked him, and he went, "Well, <laughs> that's yeah. not who I was thinking." But did, go he actually, ahead. did he actually do that? No, no. Oh, no, okay, no. okay. Yeah. I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit! What did I miss?" Um, <laughs> I, I'm but a, overall, I mean, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I'm a massive Archer fan. I mean, I think everybody's a massive Phoenix fan, or they should be. I, I, I've been, I've said it on here before, I've been a big Archer Mark since last year's G1. He just really impresses me. I like his whole presence. I think he looks cool. I think his really long Bianca Belair uh, hair whip <laughs> looks fucking cool. He ain't whipping nobody with that shit. He's throwing people in the stands. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it's, uh, I'm just saying, like. He is the best wrestler with the worst tattoos. That's all I'll say. Say that to his face. Oh, God, no. Absolutely not. But we used to say that about him. I know that you didn't, Zach, because you weren't watching here. But when he was in WWE, he got made fun of a lot for having that tramp stamp. I don't know if he got made fun of on air, but I certainly made fun of him. Oh, yeah, without question. I mean, I think you and I probably stood outside Jack Patrick's Patrick's on multiple occasions. (laughs) Not a sponsor. (laughs) Right. But outside Jack Patrick's. Basically, that's where this podcast comes from. It's just me and Jason burning heaters outside of Jack Patrick's, staying out in the cold, and it's like, oh, we've been out here for a half hour talking about wrestling. But, yeah, he, I think he's taken that tram stamp. I think he's blacked it completely out, right? I think I it's all black. Dude, I don't even. He's got the, it is, it's totally blacked out, and he's got those three crosses coming out of it. Like, the, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what it yeah. is now. Either way, Lance Archer is on the move up. I'm glad I'm, Lance Archer, Mark. I'm glad he's in this match. Happy to say it. I'm I'm almost I don't even want to say it, but I almost hope he, he doesn't win this ladder match. I don't want him anywhere near the TNT title. I want him in the big picture with the big platinum on his his radar versus being on the uh the mid card. I think that this episode of Dynamite though really kind of underscored what I've been trying to say about AEW main events for a while now and it's like 
I, I could never point to anything that did what I wanted it to, but I like that they just kind of, I, I know they have to build the brand and I know that I know who the big draws are. It's Moxley, Omega, Cody, you know, Jericho, they, Jericho, right. Basically those are the big four, a few other ones thrown in that are in the MJF, periphery. Baby. Yeah. But I like that they took these two guys. Like I would like to see, you know, Isaiah Cassidy and MJF or Isaiah Cassidy and, uh, Cassidy and Phoenix. <laughs> Ooh, Phoenix versus anybody, anybody really. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, just I, it just felt so different to me as a main event segment from AEW. I was super happy with it, and I was yeah. Thinking, a lot of times you get six man tags, right? That further storyline. Yeah, something uh, like that. That that eventually end in a schmoz. Like you said, you get a clean finish, but then you get a schmoz. So it was nice to you know it it, it was refreshing and. It was like you said, it's high caliber, man. Like that's something to tune in for. Like, you know, oh, if you missed out on that, like you're bonkers. You're a wrestling fan. You missed you missed that match. You missed the match of the week. It was so high caliber. No, it was it was way better than I thought it was going to be, and I thought it was going to be good to begin with. It just, I hate to gush over, but it was really. If that good. match was twenty years ago on Raw, you would have thought that those guys were fucking aliens, right? No way! No way! I'd have been like, "This is this, okay." What video game fuckery is this? Exactly. All right, Zach. What else happened? Uh, like I said, we we have more building for Revolution. So um, we had uh, Sting dominating Team Taz and Darby <laughs> Allen coming out of the rafters. So uh, I think that was definitely like something to mention. Jason's laughing he, like I'm making a face, but I did not make a face. I didn't, didn't even look even, at him. I didn't even look at yeah, him. Yeah, I know. What, what are you laughing about? <laughs> because Sting assume, gets his revenge this week. And I tell you what, not even like a thing, Mark. He did not look outside of, you know, the seating hairline, which nobody can control. He did not <laughs> look old. Like, he did a stinger splash, and it was a banger stinger splash. Uh, you know, like. He didn't get didn't look like he got blown up, and he wasn't like super slow, like you know, because you worry. I'm like, dude, like the guy's like in his sixties and he's out here. Um, but I, you know, I thought it was a cool segment. He dragged Taz's kid out of the body bag after a, a funny little video uh, or vignette, and um, you know, like now maybe we can be done with, um, you know, this until the pay per view, right? Because like. This team, we've had them come out, and it was like a very slow burn. And we've talked about, like, we need something to happen, and now we've had some stuff, and, like, we had them get the heat on Sting. We had Sting get some revenge. Now we can have the match. But um, I like this segment. I don't know what you guys thought of it. I thought it was a entertaining segment, uh, and I, I, I'm trying to be as objective as possible here because, obviously, you guys, I know it's the Sting segment of the week, and Jason's looking at me because he wants to start cracking up. And, <laughs> I already did. I saw the look on your face Zach a couple times. Zach can't see me, so it looks like I'm just like out over here making faces behind Zach's back or no, something. He's, he's really just not what's happening. He's really not. I should Maybe come up. rolled his eye a couple of times. I sh- no, I didn't roll my eye. <laughs> I should have a little drop on here like the Sting segment of the week. <laughs> but No, you should have Tony Schiavone. It's Sting. <laughs> I thought it was a I thought it was a good segment. <laughs> I don't know why there needs to be another person brought into it as Taz's son, but that has less to do with Sting and Darby Allen and more to do with the booking. Yeah, really, I think it was just getting heat, you know. Like, yeah, sure, it, it's fine. And you know, Darby Allen coming in from the rafters on the uh, the zip line is reminiscent of Sting back in the day. All good. What I really came. A, way with on this segment was that Brian Cage the more and more I look at him looks like he's a dangerous wrestler like it looks like he actually like hurts people did you see him try to bomb power bomb yeah Brian Pillman Jr. into the the steps or the oh, ring post no. well it's oh, supposed dude. to be the post and it kind of missed he just fucking threw, threw him. him yeah <laughs> I was like oh I thought I was the only one like I, I looked online because I was like watching, and I was like, I was like, nobody like that I saw was like saying anything, and I was like, oh my god, that think, looked brutal. I, I think I tweeted about it. Yeah, I, I think I was like, man, that looked dangerous as fuck. I I put down a couple of tweets like, oh, he almost gave him as much air as Nia Jax get a, gets on a leg drop or something. Mm-hmm. I you ain't fi- shit. Couldn't find the right wording. You ain't shit. <laughs> you know, on a joke. You ain't shit. You gotta find the right wording. Yeah, man. Brian, you Cage, still ain't shit. I don't know. He just. 
that looks so sloppy and so dangerous that it almost kind of made me, kind of made me mad at him. Because Brian Pillman's face when he hit the ground was that dude was in the fucking pain and he was not just selling that dude. Fu- and I don't fucking, think it was more about the edges of the step. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Into his thighs. Yeah. Like, oh my god. He just completely missed the ring post. Okay. A uh, couple of things, three things probably. Number one, um, <laughs> I didn't. No, it, it'll be three things. I'll, I'll keep it brief. I'm I'll sorry, just try that's to. Just, that's just really funny. <laughs> couple of things, three things, three things. Number four, <laughs> number, <laughs> number four, <laughs> and C. Um, I didn't think Sting. I thought HPK on zipline. When Darby Allen came in, Sting usually came um, vertically. This reminded me of HBK when he came in to face That's Bret right. Hart. Yeah, um, I'm surprised they even did it, especially with the the past history of zip lines. But I'm they surprised di- that Darby Allen's mom signed the permission slip. So you ain't. Sh- <laughs> Hang on. Oh my god! I'm sorry. That was funny. Um, you're gonna do this one right. <laughs> you ain't shit. Two, um, I think the hook thing is because Taz is at commentary, so it's easy to get him pissed off. It's the easy way to, um, to kind of make the receipt a little more personal, if sure. you will. Yeah. The Brian Cage thing, I will agree with you that he did recklessly throw that man, uh, Brian Pillman, into the steps trying to hit the post. But then, if I'm not mistaken, Brian caged pinned Brian Pillman and then after the match you can see Cage kind of you know go down for like five or ten seconds and you can't see what they're saying but he didn't get up right away maybe that was like hey man I'm sorry I threw you a little awkwardly or whatever the case may be I'm sure it was it it was the kind of thing that you wanted to see uh, Charlotte Flair do the Kyrie saying when she fucking murdered her Oh yeah, <laughs> like fucking murder. That was worse. No, I'm sure. I'm. I'm not saying that Brian Cage is a bad guy or anything. No, no, I'm just no, saying no. It, it just looked like when you watch as much wrestling as we do, you can tell when something looks really sloppy, and that looked. Really I knew what sloppy. he was trying to do, and I know what I saw, and it was two totally different things. Yeah, and I and Excalibur when it happened, I think it was Excalibur. Sometimes Excalibur and Shivani sound very similar. But Excalibur said when it happened, he goes, Jesus what is it Christ. This, like, I don't know how you like, can't, now can't tell people apart by their voice. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let that one slide, of, dog. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. Like, this weird kind of like aphasia is now like in the sonic realm. <laughs> I was Wait sitting there thinking to myself, Wait <laughs> a minute. A second. No, we can't on. tell these hold two jokes apart. Hold on a second, Zach. Hold on a second, Zach. Come on. Hold on, hold on a second. See, I was going to give him a pass, Zach. This was on you. So when no, this that, starts no, going I, south, I re- this is on you. I, no, I really – like. I'll I'll take all the heat for not being able to tell don't, the don't, Young Bucks apart and all God. that shit. I still can't, but I'll take all the heat on that. Can – you guys – isn't there sometimes where Shivani and Excalibur, because they're not Jim Ross, like <laughs> you have to – it has it, – it takes you a second to realize who's talking? That nev- a little bit. Did you say no, a little bit? I mean, I said not even a little bit. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> he was looking for that line. She was like, keep splashing <laughs> in the middle of the ocean. I, like, I can't swim. I was like, throw me the life, throw me the life preserver, Zach. I was like, oh, did you say a little uh, bit? No, God. not even a little bit. Damn it. <laughs> Shark grabs my ankle. Right. <laughs> oh, you seen this red around Bill at this point? <laughs> I just grew up with Tony Schiavone. Like, you know, he was one of the staples of my childhood. So, like, maybe that's it. Dude, that, I, watched a, I watched a ton of WCW. I know Tony Schiavone. I've met Tony Schiavone. True story. That's true. I, I, I did not. You have. Yeah, I'm still a little jealous. And when that. I met him, I said, where's your mask, Excalibur? <laughs> <laughs> and then he freaked out and he ran away. Okay, so I say I'm not supposed to be seen. Um, okay. Oh man. Anyway, yeah, we can I, move on. I forgot what we were talking. Oh, somebody said though, if you rewatch that episode, somebody when he lands, somebody says on oh, mic, Jesus, "Jesus Christ!" Like yeah. you can tell, <laughs> you can tell they're like, "Man, this guy got fucked." Up. <laughs> right. This was not supposed to happen this way. All right. Uh, what's up next, Zach? 
Uh, we can just move on. Uh, the rest of the stuff was just kind of building for Revolution, so nothing like too major. Although it was a good match with Isaiah Cassidy and Adam Page, but we don't have to go in depth about it. This is worth watching. Uh, good but, match um, between them two. Uh, Brandon Cutler came out and fought Hager. Brandon Cutler came out in a dinosaur mask also, so... He's a Dungeon Dragons guy. Yeah, and like his... Oh, it's a dragon. Is yeah. awesome. His, so his wife makes the ring gear for a lot of the AEW folks. Uh, she's made the Young Bucks ring gear like their whole career because like Brandon Cutler and him are childhood friends. But, like Brandon yeah. Cutler's ring gear is like on point. Yeah, it is. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. His yeah. elbow drop. It's like I think better than the Young Bucks. Yeah, I think that so, them. Anyway. I think that them saying that Brandon Cutler is the Young Bucks' childhood friend almost sound like. They probably shouldn't say it because it sounds like an excuse for why he's on television. television. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but, 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 also, like, he also jobbed 100%. The only dude he's ever beat is Peter Avalon. No, so. no, no. I won't say that because I was going to say. That's fine. I don't I don't mind somebody jobbing. I just don't know why he's got to come out in a dinosaur mask and so does uh, I Luchasaurus. You. I just think oh, it's a lot of dinosaur masks. Thing. <laughs> it's, it's, a, you, it's just. Thing, like you know, like that's Luchasaurus's gimmick, and it has been before. And like with Brandon Cutler, is just yeah, it's more of a D and D. Like that's his gimmick because he's like a super nerd, and he does the AEW game stuff with Kenny Omega. Maybe that's just a generational thing, even though we're only six years apart. But uh, you know, <laughs> did you just fucking call me old? <laughs> you just fucking call me old. That's exactly oh, what he said. Shit. <laughs> I was getting, I was supposed to be getting offended. He got offended first. Now I'm, I'm I, now I'm gonna get mad at uh, the young bug's dad getting beat up, and Zach's gonna be like, "Oh, well, actually, I forgot about that." Zach's gonna that be like, "You're only really mad way. about that because you know it's a generational thing. You're mad about the old guys getting beat up. You know, <laughs> no, but, you're supposed to get mad about Papa Buck getting beat up. Shit. Honestly, I'm I'm glad you brought that up. I, I forgot because like that was a great way to get heat on kind of a a ho hum program, right? Because like MJF and Jericho just kind of won this thing and they got the title shot, and yeah, they're stars. But there wasn't any real heat about the match. I didn't really give a shit about the match. Uh, but this worked, man. Like, even though, you know, it's just total pro wrestling 101. Like, you saw the Young Bucks dad, they're taking pictures. I'm like, oh, that dude's getting messed up. By the end of this show. <laughs> it's, also a very, it's also a very good visual to have them throw the dad into both of their faces on the back of the truck and have the blood. blood. On, on both of their faces. That's you, a, re- yeah, that's a really cool yeah, visual. Yeah, you stole my thunder. It works. Yeah, It totally. definitely works. Totally stole my thunder. But, yeah, I, that was the only good part about that segment, honestly. And, I mean, for me, AEW last night was either hit or miss. There was things I liked. There was things I didn't like. There was very little gray area. What about Britt Baker losing to Nyla Rose and Nyla Rose making it to the finals of the uh, Women's Championship Tournament? Honestly, surprised. Yeah, there was another surprise. Now, even I'm, though Nyla, Nyla and Tay Conti had like a great match that the match before that, um, but still, like it was a little surprising. You weren't surprised by that, Jason? I'll, look, Britt Baker is amazing. Okay, I think she's an amazing heel. The fact that she gets her own talking segment, I think, is kudos to the fact that they trust her in that scenario. I know, and I saw the bracket. I looked at that, and I'm like, the possible matchup of Nyla versus Britt Baker. I'm like, man, you know, I hope Britt Baker wins. I didn't say that, oh, Britt Baker's going to win. She's going to the finals. To me, it was, I hope she wins. So, I mean, that scenario right there, I think, was already causing me trepidation, plus the fact that she was a, a former champion, plus the fact that she's had a bang-out match with Sheeta. It is... Am I disappointed? Fucking A right, I'm disappointed. This should be Thunder Rose, at least for me, Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker on the American side in the finals. I tell you what, I can't agree with that part more. Britt Baker is a better talent and a better better wrestler than Nyla Rose. But I'll say this. They at least kept it consistent. They put the big people over. Nyla Rose went over Britt Baker. Lance Archer went over Phoenix. That, At that those point, two have nothing to do with each other. No, when we were talking about how uh, a few pay-per-views ago on AEW were like all the big guys lost. 
Archer lost. I think that was Brody Lee's title match. Somebody, another big guy lost. And we're, you, you know, I think you brought it up, was like, you know, bad night for the big guys. That's kind of AEW's kind of, you know, one of the few things that people want to harp on, that the big guys aren't big guys. The little guys win, especially, you know, AEW haters want to always bring out the fact that Darby Allen beat Brian Cage and retained the TNT title a few weeks ago. How he's supposed to do that when he's 200 pounds lighter shouldn't be happening. So at least we kept it consistent. They didn't have one big person lose and the other big person win. Like I said, this am I disappointed? Of course I am. But ultimately, they are now Rose hasn't been around for a while, so he reestablished her. Britt Baker is is already established. She should be okay after this. My hope is there's interference on Sunday, so we still get Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. You can move Rio and um Nile Rose again. You can have that rematch for the US final and you can go from there. All right. I think that about covers AEW, except for we didn't mention Don Callis. Uh, calling that room the Moxley, Moxley extermination, extermination chamber. chamber. Yeah, you think you slick. You <laughs> think you slick. I'm, I'm like, man, hold up, rewind that shit. You think you slick, and then started laughing. I'm like, <laughs> so I, you know, I used to say at the beginning of AEW that I didn't really like them bringing up WWE all the time because it made them look like a little brother or something, or you know, the way Kansas City thinks about St. Louis or something. Hey, like man, that. for that. Um, but I think that now that AEW has been winning for a while, now it just seems like arrogance and Trolling that, a little bit. and that I can get behind. <laughs> I don't have any, I, I don't have any problem with that at all. Like I said, calling it the Moxley extermination chamber comedy. is funny comedy. Don, like, Ca- Don Callis, no. <laughs> Don Callis is funny. <laughs> okay. I was like, no, you did not just say that. Let me rewind that again. Dude is funny. I'll just say this and we can, we can move on. If you want to, I'll tell us when we move on. I said, if, 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 what I say, we can move on after this. Damn. The fact He's that, up. the fact that they said it to me is fucking funny, but to me, this was never, I never wavered on this. I had no problem from the jump. If you going to talk shit, talk shit. That's just the way that I grew up from the, the eight, nine years old, all the way up to 47 right now. If you're going to talk shit, talk shit, but you better be able to back this up at some point. Cause otherwise you're going to get talked shit about. Yeah. That is the big difference between me and you, because I see context and you see black or white. This is banned from ring. See, that's what you get from the, uh, That's what you get. That's what you get. Okay? That's what you get. Exactly. You pushed the wrong button, motherfucker. No, I didn't. That was the right button. That was the right button. Because right, the three count's going to be Big, big show. show. Okay, fair enough. Oh, my God. Zach, tell us You want to, yeah. No, we're not. Yeah, so no. we, Leave we, it in. We, <laughs> Let yeah. them see how the sausage is made. <laughs> I got to go piss. You guys start out next week. So, I will just, uh... Say no, I like yeah, soaked sausage. I feel like this is like uh, my job. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> no, you're supposed to be the uh, the referee between us. Okay, you know better. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we started out in NXT with the worst Johnny Gargano match I've ever seen. Wow. In my life. Wow, really? Well, really? I mean, name a, name no, name a worse one. Okay. Like they're all bangers. No, no, no. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It, it, they are all great, but I mean, I didn't think as much as I hate Dexter Loomis, and I, I will use the word hate. Okay, at this point, he's not even somebody I even want to watch on TV. I like this match; I really did. Take away the the slithering around portion of the program, I just can't get behind that. Dexter Loomis can work. I'm not sure what Indy Hartwell is, you know, falling over her feet for. You know, the fact that he kind of converted. I'll use that in air quotes. Um, Austin Theory makes sense. You know, that's just, you know, that white van. Uh, what's, what's the theory? Uh, not the theory, but the term that. Uh, little, little Stockholm Syndrome. Okay, thank you. That's Stockholm Syndrome 101 for Austin Theory. I get that. I didn't get the Indy Hartwell, you know, all of a sudden, you know, in the middle of the match, he, she's falling for uh, Dexter Loomis. I mean, if you're going to do that, that's fine. But, I mean, at least set the shit up. Yeah, I mean they they kind of had a little something with the with the talking segment at the beginning where like you know she 
she said a little something about him being cute or attractive. Um, okay, whatever they still, sang the little song or whatever, but right. it wasn't like a lot. Yeah, like, but I mean, yeah. That, that's that's not to me enough to where all of a sudden she goes against the way and derails any fuckery that's supposed to happen. Yeah, because in kayfabe, this is the best thing that could happen to her career by being hooked up with two absolute veteran amazing wrestlers. Right. You know, like, in kayfabe, like, she should be, like, incredibly loyal to the Gargano way. Especially, same thing with Austin Theory. I mean, like, that's why they're there is because Gargano and LeRae are so good. No, like, uh, no, but like I said, for Austin, I get it. You know what I'm saying? You know, God knows what Dexter yeah, yeah, Lewis yeah. did to that boy behind the, uh, the van closed doors. Now, that all that being said, I got a problem yep. with the Indy Hartwell portion of the program. I mean, uh, yeah. The singing is I, cool. It made me giggle, but that's not enough for me to all of a sudden accept the fact that she's going to go rogue and and not jump uh, Dexter Lewis when it's time to do so. Sure, absolutely. I guess the reason I thought this match was so poor, and yeah, technically it was not bad, but it's just, I just, I can't get behind Dexter Loomis at all. And like, I think technically it works and it's just like, I don't know. I just don't dig, like you said, the slithering thing. It just doesn't do it for me. The gimmick doesn't do anything Thank for you. me. Okay, that's what I was going to say. He, they never, and I said it on Twitter last night. They never fleshed out his character. They really haven't fleshed out his gimmick. They haven't even di- discussed why they connected Velveteen Dream and Dexter Loomis. There was a time where they were saving each other from the Undisputed Era, and then all of a sudden, that goes away. Not explain oh, anything. Yeah, they did. They connected them because they both got busted by Chris Hansen See, on Datelines to Catch a Predator. <laughs> See, here you go. You ain't shit, nigga. Uh, <laughs> that's that good. What you got? What you got the condoms for? <laughs> condoms? What are you talking about? Dexter Lewis just sits there oh, and draws I, a caricature. <laughs> <laughs> like a huge draw, like a license, <laughs> and then like date of birth would be like at least eighteen. <laughs> what else you got there? Oh, peach schnapps, huh? <laughs> about how much I did like something and then we'll talk about how much we didn't like another thing. It's like the, the anti-compliment sandwich. Okay. Um, so I, I loved how they presented MSK. Those guys For sure. got so over to me. Not just, you know, they already got over to us in the matches. Like we've talked about it. Um, how they were like breakout stars in the ring. These guys came over or came across so great so much better than they ever did in Impact, like, just bringing in that reality. Um, dude talking about, you know, having, um, you know, his dad, you know, the tattoo of his dad and his dad passing away and showing pictures. It was very and, moving. Absolutely. Something and, was wrong um, because I was going to say, somebody was cutting onions in the, in my apartment, I guess, the other day, yeah, like, it was, this morning because, you know, my eyes started to get, you know, get a little blurry and shit. It was really sweet. Yeah, the production value is usually really high on NXT, but it was very blurry. Um, <laughs> so uh, the only thing I didn't like was that their, you know, kind of like promo got cut off in the ring by, you know, and that's just them, you know, kind of doing heat, right? You know, it's just like trying to get heat. They did this great thing, and then there's great video package, and they're going to get heat by having them destroyed by the tag team champions. And, of course, I'd set up a tag team championship match, which we knew we already had. Uh, and I think it's going to be one hell of a match. And I'd be really surprised if MSK didn't go over. But that was really the highlight of the entire show for me outside of, um, you know, spoiler alert, Undisputed Era has imploded entirely, not even in the factions. But MSK, like, creating new stars. Undisputed Era has been around for a long time. Uh, this MSK bit was, like, the heart of the show for me. I loved it also. Um, I read something recently that Jeff Jarrett pushed really hard at Impact that he thought that Wes Lee was the next AJ Styles and wanted to push him as such, and got a got a bunch of uh, got a bunch of pushback. 
on it. And now Jeff Jarrett is with WWE. So maybe that has something to do with these guys. Uh, the other guy, I can't remember his name. Is it Carter? Nash Carter. Nash Carter. Like Zach said, it was very touching. They look awesome, and they have made them, and this is why I really want fans back at full sale because fans would, that place would erupt for MSK. There is no doubt about it. They'd get the American Alpha treatment. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. Oh, yeah. They Um, would be an over tag team like we haven't seen probably since American Alpha. It's been a hot minute. Yeah. Good to see him handle business. Like you said, the the vignette on Nash Carr was just damn. <laughs> yeah, you can't say enough about it. It was really it was a it was an A plus. Was, yeah, they hit it out the park with that one for sure. It was an A plus. Uh, Rust versus uh, Rhymes or Rust versus Rhymes. Jesus, Rust versus Rough. Was I thinking Buster Rhymes? What was I doing? There? I have no idea. Well, Cameron, I, the Cameron Grimes. Um, I do have Cameron Grimes written right. Yeah, I was going to say it was pretty close. Okay. Uh, I do like that they're having Swerve and Ruff have at least some kind of program. Like, there is a story going on there. Yeah, for sure. You know? Well, there's actually, there's two stories. Okay. Obviously, that's the first story. The second story, to me, is... Um, God damn, what's the manager's name again? Malcolm Bivens is hiding in the locker room or in um, the doctor's examining rooms trying to find the one guy that's nicked up enough to where Tyler Russ can come in and kind of snatch a victory from. He did it, you know, last week with Kushida and that shit backfired, did it this week, and obviously Swerve came down. Not a bad little angle. No, it's Not funny. A bad it's little, funny yes. because all of a sudden he just pops out of nowhere. He's like, hey, Leon, you I, know, I, yeah. you're like the, the son I never had and didn't want. <laughs> I'm like, man, you ain't shit. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like Malcolm Bivens. No, it, I, I liked him and involved. He was kind of more serious and involved, um, but still had the funny swagger to it. This just, to me, is more of the same, just more funny, less serious. Zach? Uh, yeah, like totally fine. Uh, those guys should have like a good program. I feel like Swerve could be a much better star. I think I talked about like last week. Um, he could definitely be in that kind of North American title picture for sure. Um, cause the title picture right now is a little dense, but, um, the North American 100%. So, you know, he could work his way up to that. But, uh, but yeah, the, um, other stuff on the show we had. Um, Can we talk about Cameron more, Grimes? Um, Can we talk about Cameron Oh, Grimes? yeah. Can we talk this, about Cameron like, Grimes doing the Ted DiBiase thing and not getting why? It, it ruled. It was, okay, it thank was you. so entertaining. All right. I, yeah. was, I wasn't sure where Zach was going to go one way or the other. I thought it was very entertaining also. I think Cameron Grimes is funny. And that was a funny thing where he was like, I've seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <Wow. laughs> I was like, you ain't getting another grand the, for d- The dude just bounced it ten <laughs> times. That was funnier than hell to me. The chick was funny because yeah. you could kind of see that one coming. I was like, I couldn't, I didn't know who she was, but I was like, okay, this is definitely a woman's basketball player. So and I was waiting. Handles. Okay. Yeah. And I was waiting for her to cross him up. Cross him up. <laughs> Honestly, I ain't going to lie. I like Kiss My Grits better than this segment. To me, the Kiss My Grits video just makes me openly giggle. After the third time. the second time, time you said you giggle in the last 10 minutes. Now, listen, I'm okay with somebody giggling. I just don't think that I giggle ever. <laughs> to me, no, there's things that make me giggle. I chuckle, and then there's, you know, the full-blown J-Bell just fully, fully blown laughter. This made me giggle. It wasn't like it was funny. So those are the three levels of laughter for you: are giggle, chuckle, chuckle. It's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's Word cool. Is blowing air <laughs> out on, of your nose. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He's doing it. Hold on. <laughs> he was getting ready There's to the J-Pal hold right on. there. That's hold classic. On. Don't say anything, Zach. He was getting ready to sample each one, and we cut him off. Go ahead. What's a giggle okay, like? Okay, there you go. There's the giggle. That's a giggle. That's the giggle. That's big. What's a chuckle like? <laughs> I get it. I don't necessarily <laughs> like it, but yeah, all right, man. That sounds like a chuckle's less than a giggle. No, the, 
to me, chuckle is like it's it's funny, but it's not funny. It's like a third funny. I think we all know what the full blown one is. Okay. That's that's the one that clips the <laughs> <laughs> clips the fucking uh, recorder. Okay, giggle. See difference. All right, I'm glad we got that worked out. Yeah, me too. I think Cameron Grimes. Oh, I can't wait. I think Cameron Grimes. He's to me. He's like an angle. Like where he can start off being kind of funny to the audience, and then eventually he can get more and more serious until he's an ass kicker. Cameron Grimes can do whatever they want him to do. He can be funny. He can be serious. You know what I mean? Like he's like a total utility guy. Yeah. He can change and, the drop yeah. of a hat. And we know that he can work too. So. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think we. He needs this gimmick per se right now to jump into the North American title picture. He is good enough talent alone to be in the North American title picture. Hell, he was in that uh, ladder match of, a few months back. I don't think the gimmick kind of adds to what is already there. Now, whether you like it, love it, hate it, that's on you. I'm on the camp of I like it. You know, if it was <laughs> – the Ted DB, if they just wouldn't ride it into the ground, I thought Ted DiBiase for me would have worked. Twice would have been enough for me. The third time, I was like, okay, this is probably one time I, to make. I'll never disagree with that. I thought the one time was funny enough. I just thought it was funny as fuck that he just stood there and watched the guy bounce it ten times, which is one of the stupidest <laughs> fucking jokes I've ever seen. I'm sitting there like, okay, so you did. And I'm like, you didn't watch the whole thing, did you? <laughs> okay. No, yeah, he said you it. Did. He yeah. watched like seven seconds of it. He goes, I've seen enough. <laughs> like, uh, dumbass. <laughs> we had uh, Io Shirai Wait. versus, oh, sorry, Zach. Go ahead. I was going to say, you just know that the whole thing is such a geek that he's going to spend all of his money and he's going to end up broke. So, like, let him do that for a couple of weeks, and then it'll be over. Like, the gimmick will be over because he won't have any more money. So. Yeah, I think he's a stud. I, I hope he doesn't go broke, be perfectly honest. I mean, will it probably happen? Yeah, you're probably right. I didn't even think about that until you just said it. But, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't want him to become broke. I think keeping this around can get that funny entertainment factor that WWE NXT likes to have. But ultimately, I agree with Bill. At some point, it's going to have to be about the North American title and or the NXT championship if he gets to that point. Right now, it's funny, and I don't want him to lose that. All right, and uh, up next, we had Io Shirai versus Zoe Stark in her first or only her second NXT match of all time. Uh, They gave Zoe Stark a lot of offense in this match, more so than you would think. Uh, Io Shirai ended up going over. I like Tony Storm's promo afterwards coming out and cutting a promo on on Io saying that you knew you couldn't beat me, so that's why you pinned uh, Mercedes Martinez at TakeOver. It kind of it kind of lets the quick match at TakeOver have a storyline sense which I like. Now, maybe the maybe the quick match on TakeOver happened because they were running out of time or something or whatever was happening backstage. Uh, you're on the network. I don't, you got plenty of time. Yeah, but they might have strict rules. They might have strict rules from somebody saying these TakeOvers can only last X amount of time because that's how Wait, we— Wait, you call in? That's how we get— that's how we get maximum. That's how we get maximum views. Okay, or well, something. It, look, if you there's call, all sorts of algorithms. For okay, shit like so if this. you call in the next time, can you let me know beforehand? I mean, you know, you fucking with me getting high the whole nine yards. You know, there's there's pace to this thing. How it was. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Tony Storm uh, promo. What do you think, Zach? Uh, yeah, I mean, the she's right. <laughs> like we talked about this, like, uh, but what's weird is that it's kind of weird for the heel to be right. Um, but uh, but yeah, like I, said she's I, white. I thought that's what he said too. <laughs> I was like, I swear yeah, to God. No, I was like hell I yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, she Uh-oh. is. I was getting ready to say, we getting ready to go down a dark right. path. They're my favorite. <laughs> is he being me? He's trying to be funny? It's kind of surprising. We look at the lower half, but, um, you know. <sighs> <laughs> He's heating up. <laughs> I was about to say, don't tell nobody. <laughs> I'll move away from you. Shit. No, Tony Storms uh, dumps like a trunk. Wow. It dumps like a trunk. Go ahead, Zach. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe you should just let Cisco do that. No, uh, but she is right. And uh, I just I think that uh, we need this program because honestly, for EO. 
the, you know, I'm not super excited about the women's like championship right now because I feel like Io is just kind of in this stasis period where she's like a dominant champion and they haven't built anybody up. You know, Raquel got that pin. She never got a shot. Tony is definitely a great contender, and I think it would shake things up in the women's division and make me a little bit more excited about that division if Tony took it off of her. So, absolutely. To me, this is no different than like UFC or boxing, where you have one boxer basically querying out a division, and that's what EO has done. And it's no disrespect to the division. I mean, that's that's what EO has done. And I that's think what Oscar more, did. Okay, that's more. That's I would what give Shayna Baszler did too. I would give more so credit to them versus not giving credit to the roster. Now that said, obviously you have the Zoe Starks, the Jessica Mia's of the world already there with Ty Valkyrie and others on the way. I think this is just a, a kind of a, a momentary blip on the radar. I'll give it a pass. I'm not saying I hated the match. I thought, honestly, Zoe Stark was, was really, really good. She came off looking strong. Obviously, she wasn't going to get the win. But in this scenario, it's like Bully Ray always says, EO went over but Zoe Stark got over. And that, to me, is, is the most important thing at this point. Uh, up next, we had Casey Catanzaro versus Zia Lee, where they used the ref, stop, the ref stoppage uh, to end the match, which I like in wrestling. I think it's an underused, and maybe underused is better. Maybe it's better that they don't use this all the time because yeah, for it, sure. it is so effective when they use it. But they, they're obviously building up Zia Lee to be a world crusher. Maybe they're building up to a Zia Lee Io Shirai match, which could be badass. Jason? Um, I'll be honest. I was a little pissed off that Casey Canizero got some offense in, but then by the time the match ended, it all kind of made sense, and it, it put this in a nice little bow, especially when uh, – Casey got the quote unquote broken leg. Um, I don't know if we're going to get that far with Zia Lee versus EO. I think EO is going to lose the title before we get to that point. This angle has to play out first, but I was mad at first, but like I said, it got me back on board by the end. So, so far, so good. Two here. Yeah, like we'll see where this goes. Like this whole thing is just like kind of fine. Um, I don't really have any strong feelings about, uh, you know, it's cool they're doing something with Zylee and having her, like, look strong. I like that animation, but the whole the whole fantasy element, I kind of like it. I kind of don't. I'm just undecided about it right now. It well, let speaks me... to some things that I, I like in my life, but it speaks to some things I don't necessarily like about pro wrestling. Uh, like, you know what I mean? It's like mixing two things that I like, but I don't know if I'm, I'm happy with the mix. But in what way? Oh, I just really like fantasy. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's, like, my primary, like, reading, like, pleasure reading is, like, fantasy stuff. And, like, I also really like, you know, like, oh, I, with pro I, wrestling, I kind of like the realistic aspect. Oh, so, I totally misread what you were saying. I thought you were maybe leaning into what they're doing with, like, the Asian characters in terms of the uh, somebody being a thousand years old and shit like that. But, uh, no, I, I get what you're saying. Yes. Uh, I also am a fan of fantasy sl- slash science fiction, uh, as I'm sure a lot of wrestling fans are. You know, the nerds. Um, maybe you'll have a stronger opinion about this. What did you think about the Grizzly Young Veterans win over Killian Dane and Drake Maverick and then Alexander Wolf's return? I would say return. No, like, that's very he been in- he was, yeah, well, I think he was there the week before, and they did that vignette where they, you know, they ran down the Imperial lineup or whatever. So I think he was there that week. Obviously, Walter hasn't come back. But for me, this was the seeds of a possible heel turn. I mean. For who? For uh, Killian Dane. Um, for Dane? Way Barrett said it during the match or whatever. You know, he used to be, the, you know, the – this beast, you know, the whatever the uh, the catchphrase was, the the beast of Belfast or whatever, and now he's basically, you know, Drake Maverick's bodyguard, for lack of a better term. Yeah, but that's not 
to me, that doesn't seem like it's leaning towards a heel turn for Killian Dane. To me, it seems like leaning towards a feud between Killian Dane and Alexander Wolf. Because Killian Dane is just being the nice guy. He's being the oh, face. Okay, and I how's, thought it was, how's that working out? I'm just him? saying I thought it was really sweet when Killian Dane ran it, Drake it Maver- Maverick it, back it there. It was very and sweet. And said we need some help. Yeah, it was. And then the big jerk comes down, Alexander yeah. Wolf, and yells at Killian Dane for being nice. Look. Maybe I just see myself in Killian Dane a lot. I'm also hairy. <laughs> my back is disgusting. My shoulders. Dude, I get. I'm getting a. I'm getting a COVID vaccine next week because I'm obese. What the fuck, man? I'm getting a COVID vaccine next week because I'm rich. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll tell you what. We can drive that together. Thanks. And you just gotta go and be like, I'm William Vidge. <laughs> <laughs> um, I Sir, thought, you don't look like a William bitch. I thought the uh, Grizzly Young Veterans promo beforehand was very good. Zach I like them. Amazing. I like that they are not giving up on them and they're keeping the momentum going, even though they lost to MSK, which they should have lost to MSK. No problem with that. Yeah. I well, was, they're great workers. They, they got to have, like, MSK has to have some rivals. Like, the tag team division right now is pretty weak. Yeah, so. and I wouldn't mind those guys having a really long rivalry. For sure. You know, something. I could easily see that being one of the, the tag team feuds of the year when it's all said and done in 2021. I'll go that far. Uh, next up, we had Karrion Cross versus Legato or versus. Might as well have been. Yeah, Santos Escobar. Cross goes over. I guess I'm not really sure what the point of this was. Like. Yeah, I have no idea. That's that's my biggest gripe with it. It was my biggest gripe with even the build. I'm like, why are they even doing this? And it was like, was it to show that Carrie and Cross can sell for five minutes on TV? I mean, that's pretty much like all I got. No, well, obviously it was more than five minutes. I just honestly, I think they're trying to buy the the bigger feud sometime. Where when I mean bigger, I'm talking about Cole, um, Kyle O'Reilly. And Finn Bauer hashed that out, and then I think the winner ends up having to deal with Karrion Cross. I agree with what you guys said, Toey. The build makes no sense. The match, I mean, the fact that it was no DQ was advantage to um, Legado del Fantasma just because they could use the numbers. But, I mean, when he... Th- when he being carrying cross through wild and Mendoza through that plexiglass, that's all I needed to see right there. Everything else was just, you know, filling up time to make sure that we had a nice little cliffhanger at the end. I like the match because of the physicality, the build to the match, the, the logic to the match made zero sense. It didn't make sense in the, like you were talking about bully Ray earlier saying, Somebody went over. This person got over. I would say that this Karrion Cross went anything. over, and nobody. No, went, yeah, nobody as I got say, over. it didn't do anything for anybody. Karrion Cross. I think honestly, Santos Escobar it is over to a certain degree. It certainly didn't do anything for Legado del Fantasma. Though. Zero. Did they? Pay, well, but I wasn't. But honestly, what would you expect? Got TV time. But would wouldn't you expect this to happen though? I mean, Karrion Cross basically. Laid out uh, Keith Lee, okay? Okay. So, in this scenario, yeah, he should be laying waste to at least two, if not three, cruiserweights. If you want to keep him strong, if you want to make him look like the but guy he was as the champion before. I, I agree I know with you. I know I you're playing you. devil's advocate. I agree with you. It does nothing. It doesn't do, it, it helps nobody. It Everybody does. is basically where they were coming in. Can I finish? Yes. Can I finish? Yes. No, that's basically what I was going to say. Okay. Uh, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't do anything for your cruiserweight championship. If you have a guy like Karrion Cross come in and just waste three dudes, it does nothing for your cruiserweight championship. I would rather have, uh, and this is not because of uh, the BFR bias, I would rather have Kurt Stallion lose to Santos Escobar three shows in a row than have Karrion Cross come in and just waste all three of them because where does that leave Escobar? Right. It leaves him nowhere unless he gets some sort of retribution, which he's not. 
I don't yeah, I don't want to go down that road because that that doesn't sound like that wins for anybody. That's all I have to say. I don't think we'll be saying the I don't think we'll be saying the retribution word for much longer. Uh, Oh, oh, well, hopefully not. Uh, Zach, what did you think of the last segment on NXT Wednesday night? Because it was um, a bit of a (laughs) doos. Well, uh, it was well kind of played, I guess, but uh, totally predictable. Um, You know that. Nobody ever actually apologizes for a heel turn because that I can't remember one time that ever happening. So it's the performance uh, but, that you want, though. That, that's what I say. He just shitted on Adam Cole. Good lord! Yeah, but what's the? What, how is the performance? No, but though? Adam Cole did a great job. The performance was great. Absolutely, yeah. Incredible, one hundred percent. Yeah, and um, you know now we get a triple threat ladder match for custody of Bobby Fish. See you, H N. We don't know that. That's so funny. I didn't even laugh. Like that's like it's not. I'm not. I'm not saying that in a pejorative way. Like that's so funny. I forgot to laugh. That is actually. I can't believe I didn't think about that joke. No, this dude's funny. Why are you shaking your head? The dude is funny. <laughs> Bobby Fish is a goddamn talent, and all of a sudden he became the redheaded stepchild of fucking undisputed. He's with- just not there. That's, that's only, the joke is no, just he's, he's not it's there. It's fucking funny. There's no question about it. Um, <laughs> oh, the only thing I'm gonna say with that, uh, the only pushback I'm gonna say is that in kayfabe, well, I'm sorry, in kayfabe style. Kayfabe style. Kyle O'Reilly's not supposed to come back for four to six weeks. I don't think we're going to wait four to six weeks to make this triple threat undisputed era match happen. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to happen beforehand. And then from that point, we just kind of have to figure it out. Um, you think anyway, that's where we're going? I No. Honestly, I, th- honestly, I think we're going to get Finn versus Adam Cole next. The winner gets carrying cross and then you'll have if i if i'll go that far i'll i'll go ahead and finish the theory finn beats adam cole adam cole feuds with kyle o'reilly finn feuds with carrying cross have forgive me have we gotten finn balor versus adam cole yet uh, he took the title from him. Finn took the title from Adam Cole. Yeah, that was the. Um, okay, they so, had the uh, fatal four way, and then what we've, everybody had the what, the one pin. What we've never gotten is Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. Not on S- NXT. Right? No, in the Indies, sure. Yeah, but if we're talking about now. Y- all three of us, we've watched every single takeover Shit. that's ever ever been Gotta broadcast, be right? <laughs> no, I mean takeovers aren't even that. Uh, but we've we've watched fucking 20, 20 of them just on this podcast. True story. So right, so we've watched every single one. If you think about the main event for every single takeover, how many excite you less? Than Karrion Cross versus Finn Balor. And how many excite you more than Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly? Go ahead, Two Beer. I'll let you yeah, I'll let you there's, start. There's a, Do you see my there's point? There's definitely a big difference there. You see yeah, my you see Adam my point, Cole, right? It's yeah, like it's like are 100%. we are, are we watching for the fucking work rate? Or are we selling the poster? Because the poster Karrion Cross versus Adam Cole or Karrion Cross versus Finn Balor, whatever looks good. Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly, I, I would pay a lot of money to watch that match. I'll go this far. Yeah, I would pay. I Hold would on. rather have the one. You're, yeah, you're right. You said you said that Zach could go first. Let him go first. Okay. Oh yeah, I would. I would just rather have that one, not just because of the history, but I think that adds to it. Like we have years of history. Um, these guys came in together have been dominant in this faction and it's something that you never really thought that you would see because it seems like undisputed or such a staple and so besides that then we have like the work rate where adam cole top guy in the promotion for 
almost two years. And then you've got Kyle O'Reilly, who we always talk about as one of the most underrated talents in the promotion for the even longer amount of time. So that excites me more than um, to just put it very, um, I would say like to be very pithy, but almost like not like real serious, like a main roster guy versus an impact guy, well, right? Yeah, that's what we've got. Big guy versus small guy. He means impact, not yeah. as an impact wrestling. He means impact as in a guy that No, actually... I meant impact wrestling. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. But like also, Kerry Cross is like more than that. I think they're building him up to be more than that. And not saying impact is like bad. It's an entertaining television show. That but like... I mean, yeah, yeah that was the that's, backhanded, that's what I, the backhanded I, comments I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, that was, that was the <laughs> Dog, get get get, like get the, the show out your I can say it, right? It's like the meanest way I can say it, but like there are people that would think of, of it that way. Um, we have years of history between these other guys, and then you know, Finn is understandably a top guy, and he's really talented. Uh, but sometimes the story headlines the pay per view, and it's not like you know the Gargano. Champa stuff like yeah. those guys weren't always champions. Sometimes the story headlines the pay per view, and it's not it's not the, the All, title. Also, I guess we could say this is that either one of those matches, if both these matches happen at WrestleMania, let's say one on night one and one on night two, dude, that's not going to happen. But go ahead, just listen to me. For this. I, 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 we had Carrying Cross versus Finn Balor. Okay, night one. Just let me finish, please. Carrying Cross versus Finn Balor. And you, you gonna say anything? Okay, thank you. And then we had <laughs> you mother. And then, and then we had <laughs> I gave him the finger. <laughs> and then we had uh, Cole versus O'Reilly. Either one of those matches could happen without the belt. They could get to a point where either one of them happens without the belt. The O'Reilly versus Cole match, and I just talked myself out of what I was saying. The O'Reilly versus Cole match is more likely to happen without a belt on the line. But, mm -hmm. which would still be, uh, you know, could still be a match of the year candidate, really. Oh, yeah. Because you know they'd give him 32 minutes or some shit. I'll just say this. <laughs> I'll say this. Um, when you have the guy that lost the title, not due to, you know, legitimate, you know, in ring uh, defeat, the injury took the title away from me. I just have a hard time saying that that match can't be for the title the next time around. Kerry Cross is here for a reason. It's just, you know, at this point, unfortunately, the, the parade has gone on without him. So now it's time to kind of catch him up. And that's what I think they did with this Santos Escobar match. Like I said, not a huge fan of it, but it, it kind of is what it is. That said, moving forward, if you don't have Karrion Cross versus Finn Bauer for the title, it just doesn't make sense. At least story wise, storyline wise, it just doesn't make sense. Finn is holding the title long enough to the point where you know we kind of need a new challenger for him. So why not have the challenger be the guy that never lost the title? You know, at least didn't yeah. get well, pinned you, for it. I tell you what, you you do have these guys make a video package. There's got to be footage of Finn Balor when he lost the Universal title. He was the mm. first Universal champion, and it was taken from him because of a shoulder injury. And like you have him going through rehab, like you know they you know they have videos of it. And then you oh, have sure. Karrion Cross, who who never once got to defend his NXT title because no. of a shoulder injury. Ew. And and then you just put those together, and then that's a match that I want to see. But right now, like you said, you said because of the holding pattern that Karrion Cross is in, it's not they haven't built it up. So, but it is it has potential. They could tell that story, and it would be a very compelling story. And I think that's the story to be told. But just back to what Bill was saying, if we had to like do this as a takeover, one big takeover, and you had those two matches, Cross versus. Finn Bauer and uh, Cole versus O'Reilly. To me, this is that it, it's not even a choice what the main event is. Cole O'Reilly is the main event, hands down. No doubt. No doubt. Okay, there, I, it's, I, it's yeah, not like we Jack's haven't not seen. not arguing with that either. No, I'm just saying it's not like we no. haven't seen 
the the title go before a bigger feud. See Gargano Ciampa. You I, already beat, I, that, beat me to it. I you know I know that there's people out there that think differently than we do, but I think that all three of us are in agreement. Where I would rather I would rather watch two guys because I've been watching wrestling. I'm 41. I've been watching wrestling for 36 goddamn years. I would rather watch. I've seen a big guy versus a small guy a million times, just a million fucking times. I would rather watch two guys the same size or close to the same size tear the fucking house down and like get just get me off in terms of watching wrestling. Like <laughs> what like when you watch Cole versus Gargano that best out of 3 match, right. like that gets that got everybody the fuck off when they watched it. Everybody went nuts. And like, I think Cole O'Reilly could easily well, be on the way. Okada Omega, just yeah. anybody. Like, it doesn't have to be big guy versus small guy. I'm glad they all look good in the ring. I'm glad they don't look like me or like Eddie <laughs> Kingston. No offense, Eddie Kingston. You are say, boy, definitely, you shut the fuck he's up. definitely good at some shit, but I don't want to see people like, I don't want to see people that look like me with my shirt off wrestling. But I'm I'm sick of the big guy versus small guy. I want to watch it like it's an athletic event. And Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. Now I'm sitting here talking about it. God damn! Now I want to see it. No, man. it's going to happen. It's, it's going to totally going to happen. It's just whether or not Cole is the champion or not. It was a very good segment filled with lots of chaos, but it wasn't too many people. I don't think you had. You really didn't need too many people. You had the main characters. You never need too many people. That's my point. <laughs> you had the main characters. Ooh. Poor Roddy looked a little silly, but I mean, yeah, like Tubier said, that that's just that's he's part just, of the program. He's just not much of an actor. It's not really his fault. I don't. In this he, case, I don't think he need to be a great actor. I just think Roddy. He to Roddy be is there. probably the best ring guy that doesn't do the other parts of pro wrestling well like yeah, compared like, to how well he does the ring stuff. Yeah, there's the biggest discrepancy between his, his in-ring in style and his promo work. Yes. Yeah, I would agree and that's I'm I'm fine with that. They're not putting him at the head of the story. No, and and there's a reason why they didn't do that. It's like the band I listened to Dr. Dog. I was like I've never heard a band this good with a name this bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and I said, yeah, and I fucking, and I fucking love that. Band. I know, I yeah. love that band. It's a terrible name for a band. And said it weeks ago, and I'll say it again. I love the fact that they put Adam Cole back, but I knew that it wouldn't last long. And all heel factions, at some form or fashion, implode. Undisputed Dude, that, Eric, God bless like, him. You just sound like Master Killer. Oh, did I? Like all heel factions. Say it again. All feel. <laughs> I see you put me on the spot. All heel factions ultimately implode in some form or fashion. Okay, that's what you said. All heel yeah. factions in some form, form or fashion. fashion implode. Yeah, you're not master killer. That's you, you, you put me on the spot. God the, damn it! Not the Wu Tang Clan. Uh, Apparently, fuck. out of everyone, I am master killer. Yes, <laughs> Max master killer. I'm uh, Jason's Capadonna. Wow, the guy that you probably don't even know he was whooped in. No, I, no, yeah, I know. He's the worst one. Uh, <laughs> let's get to that three count. One, two, three. Listen, for all the NJPW fans, there are there is NJPW news coming up. but I want to talk about this, too. I think there's something to talk about. AEW signed Big Show. A.K.A. Paul White. Time, Paul White. Paul White. Yeah, he ain't been to SIUE alum. Really? Yeah, he went to SIUE. Like his pictures in the uh, student center over he, there. Yeah. He, he graduated from SIUE? I don't know if he graduated. Uh, he played basketball here. and so I think he did graduate. Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, he graduated with a degree. I just don't know if he graduated here. Or if he went somewhere else, but I'm pretty sure he graduated here. Yeah. I did, I did not. I, yeah, that blows my mind. Yeah. For for everybody around the country that don't live in the St. Louis area, Edwardsville is probably what thirty minutes away from St. Louis. Proper? Give or take. Yeah, very close. Yeah, and so it's a, it, we consider much, it a local a college. School, it's a much better school than it was thirty years ago, too. Like, uh, you know, it's a good state school now. Before, yeah, my wife used to teach there. A largely yeah, commuter sense. school. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is blown. Anyway, I didn't know that AEW signed Paul White. This, when Zach put it on Friends of BFR on Facebook, I thought it was a Photoshop. Totally, 
I thought it was a Photoshop when I first saw it. Could not believe that because it doesn't feel that long ago that he was on WWE television. Part of the uh, and then he had that Netflix show too that was very yeah, WWE focused. I totally forgot about that. And I always thought that everybody had like a three or six month no compete clause when they leave WWE. It was surprising to me. That being said, I'm not. I'm not going to say it's if it's good or bad. Paul White seems like a great dude. Seems like a good ambassador for the sport of professional wrestling. Um, I know that he's very talented. Good for him. I think what it says to me about AEW, and I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts, is that it says to me that AEW is not exactly what they said they were going to be when they uh, when they said Bon Voyage and went on the trip. What do you think, Jason? The Paul White thing first. Um, no problem with it, ultimately. I, I think Paul White, if you wanted to go with the – it's usually 90 days. The last time I think I remember seeing show on WWE programming is when Randy Orton was basically going around uh, punking out the legends. Uh, so that was Legends Is it only night. 90 days? I thought it was 90 good. days is no comp- non-compete. Yeah, so yeah. you basically can't go on impact – for, for 90 days the 91st day obviously knock yourself out it feels like 90 days so it, i'll just go with that i don't have a problem with with him signing to imp or impact i don't have a problem with him signing to aw for this reason and it's to me this is just it's somebody said on twitter it's it just it's it, it's so simple that i can't believe that it hasn't really gotten more traction if i worked for mcdonald's Let's say I worked for him for 20 years, and me and McDonald's all of a sudden couldn't decide how I wanted to get paid or I was going to get a promotion, and they decided that Jason gets too high and he can't work, you know, be a supervisor. You're stuck on fries, Jason. You know, get high, work on fries. So if Wendy's came up to Jason and decided, okay, Jason, we, we're willing to give you – we're willing to look past the fact that you get high to the motherfucker – and we're going to make you a supervisor. You can't work, can't work with money, but you know you can work the. <laughs> yeah, right. I love after after twenty years you can't work with money. No hell no, you can't count, motherfucker. You high all the time. But I guess that's my point. People that have a problem with Paul White moving on from WWE, they just take wrestling way too seriously. Why can't this man move over from one company to the other? It's not like he was. Okay. Just a Benedict Arnold about this shit. No, he gave up a I, good chunk of his time. I guess this is where the this is one of those times, and Zach Zach can go here in a second. This is just one of those times where I feel like you're talking to people that aren't me and Zach. No, I'm just you asked me what like, I thought. Like this the, is what like, I'm thinking. Like we're the therapist, and all of a sudden you're yelling at your boss. <sighs> okay. <laughs> You asked me what no, I thought. I That's what anybody, I think. Are, think are people saying at, that though? Yes, it's a big deal. Okay, people Who, are who's acting. Mad like, at, who's mad at Paul White for because, signing for more money? Yeah, you're this, saying people are mad at Paul White. All I'm saying is, if j- just go on Twitter, if you act like I have the biggest Twitter in the world, and for whatever reason, you guys don't read your Twitter line, or you just don't have the bigger I re- Twitter where I see more of this, where people are literally going absolutely ape shit over uh, this yeah. to the point where I had to go I was like I came on Twitter before I even watched AEW last night I'm like dude you motherfuckers that are literally fighting about Big Show leaving for AEW or caping for him or not caping for him I hope the checks that Tony Khan and, and Vince are paying you are worth it it's not that serious if he wanted to leave and Vince wanted him to go then go I don't understand why people are having a hard hard enough time accepting the fact that sometimes the band breaks up. If Vince doesn't want him around and Big Show wants to wrestle, why can't he go to AEW or Impact or whatever the fuck else he wants to go to and make a fucking career and make a little change on the way out the door? That's all I'm saying. Jason's been looking me in the end. The, in the he's been looking at me in the eye for this entire rant, and 
I got. I gotta admit, it turned me on a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to people when I talk I, uh, to them. Okay, Zach. I I I wouldn't even argue with those people because they're dumb. Like, I I think the only thing to wonder about is whether it's a a good move for AEW to sign Paul White, that's not re- for Paul White to sign with AEW. That's really why I brought it up. Like, I I want to yeah. talk about what it means for AEW. Zach, what do you think it means for AEW? Uh, I mean, time will tell. I feel like there's a good amount of old guys on AEW right now for a product that appeals to younger viewers and a product that also very much highlights young and fresh talent. There's also a good amount of old guys. So are they going to utilize them apparently as this new announcer for AEW Dark Elevation, which is like a new show they're going to be doing on Monday night? Um He's funny. Will he be given the announcer role? Time will tell. Uh, you is know, that going to be on Monday night on TNT? Seven. No, it's seven, on YouTube, right? Uh, yeah, it's 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. I don't know if it's going to be the hour or two hours, but, yeah, it's a deal. It's, uh, March 15th. On, so is it, is on, it on YouTube. TNT? On YouTube. Okay. Oh, YouTube. Yeah, that's what I thought, YouTube. So, so uh, I, I guess. You know, it's him and Tony Schiavone. Like, is he going to be good? Maybe. He has the potential to be good. He does. You know, but, the, the, um, the announcer, like, getting into a, a fight, right? Like, you know, cause, like, Schiavone did mention that he has a, a quote unquote wrestling license in AEW. So, like, might he have one program? You know, that could work, but it's not something that, you know, should be done all the time. And it's definitely not something that. I feel like they should be pushing like older wrestlers. So, you know, we'll just see how, what they do with it. It's it's suspect because it looks like they're signing a WWE cast off when in reality, you know, WWE and AEW were in negotiations with him and he picked AEW. Maybe it was money. Maybe it was vision. I don't know what it was, but we'll see what they do with it. Well, I mean, it's got, I mean, the answer has to be it just sounds like more fun to go AEW, right? Just something different. I mean, he's been with WWE for so long. I probably phrased that question incorrectly to Zach when I asked him. I said, what does it, what does it mean for AEW? I should have asked, what does it say about AEW? Because where... The, the highest that I've been on AEW in the last four weeks of this podcast, and I watch it every single fucking week, the highest I've been, the least cynical I've been, is talking about Phoenix versus Lance Archer, where there's a real want by guys like us that watch it all the time, Smarks, whatever you want to call us. There's a real desire by guys like us where I want to see wrestling. I want to see new stuff I've never seen before. I I like seeing guys get their shit in if I don't have to see that shit every single fucking week. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, me and my band, we practice every fucking week for three hours. We have a bunch of songs. What we say to each other is we're not going to play a song two weeks in a row because then it'll feel better when it comes back two weeks later and we get to play it again. You know what I mean? For sure. So... As much as I love fucking Jericho, I'm oversaturated with Jericho. I would love to see more Lance Archer. You know, Phoenix. You know, uh, the Cassidy from... Isaiah Cassidy, yeah. Isaiah Cassidy. Solid match versus um, Adam... Excuse me, Adam Page. And I don't think we talked about that they enough. They have so much talent on that roster. That's why I think they're going... Well, I don't know if this... Elevation show is going to be an extension of more dark matches. The least that's the way I'm interpreting it. Reading the the Paul Wright press clipping, I kind of said Shaquille O'Neal. That's the match that I think he, being Paul White and Shaquille O'Neal, both want. It probably should have happened in WWE, and then it didn't. So now I think this is more so of a reason why it, it, I think. Paul White signed with AEW. Well, I think Paul White signed to AEW because Paul White and Cody Rhodes used to work together a lot. And I think that they're boys. Fine. You want to no. hi- hire your friends? That's fine. No problem with it. But I don't want to see him fucking wrestle. 
I don't I don't tune into AEW to see the big show wrestle. In fact, okay. I tune away from WWE to not see the big show wrestle. I'll say this. He's gonna wrestle it at a pay per view that we bought for another reason, basically. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And I think that's kind of the He can wrestle at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. I in think the, this in is, the pre show. This is kinda like the revolution thing with the Against Chris Masters <laughs> and Tyler Rex. I'll say Master Lock Challenge. Um, I think this is kind of the thing with Revolution, where you have Shaq and, and Jay versus Cody and, and Red Velvet. This is not for us. This is not for the guys that like you know wrestling as the sport that we want it to be. It's more for the casual to get in. I guess my question then is, who is Big Show for? Because it doesn't seem like he's for either. No, this, this is for the casual fan. I, I don't... The reason why I don't have a problem with him coming over to AEW, and I think this is probably ultimately a good thing, is number one, for like the big guys that they have coming over. Um, I, I know I'm going to butcher his name, but I saw him on Dark the other night, Nick Comforto. I mean, this motherfucker is a big dude. I mean, not being like Brock Lesnar, but like, let's say. It's, Six three two seventy five. I knew I a think chick. She, I knew a chick with that last name one time, and she was hot. If she if she looks <laughs> like this dude, you might want to consider stop drinking for a while. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm telling you, she was hot. Okay, hopefully, let's keep talking about her. Hopefully, she had the, his hair. <laughs> no, let's not, because your wife's upstairs, and I will leave you if this shit starts to go left. Um, <laughs> I think show's gonna gonna be there for those those big guys. I'm I agree with Zach. I'm not sure if he's gonna be great on the mic. That's gonna be TBA. Shaq versus Show, I think, is gonna be the thing that he's there for immediately. And from there, let's just see what happens. Ultimately, it would be different if he came over and then automatically challenged Kenny Omega for the title. And I think that's where I think a lot of this vitriol comes from is that AEW was supposed to be the alternate brand where we were supposed to go away from WWE guys. And I think that's just unrealistic. If you're going to build a, a brand, you're going to have to have guys that people can recognize. If I showed somebody a picture of Darby Alley, Darby Allen that I work with at work, they're probably not going to recognize him. But if I show them a picture of Big Show, they're probably are going to recognize him. So, I mean, it's, it's the thin line between this is wrestling and it's, it's supposed to cater for guys like us versus this is business and we need to grow this so we can all make money. Any thoughts on that, on that, Zach? I was just trying to say need, that Big Show just kind of sucks. I need some of that money. Oh, you need some of that money? Yeah. What's that your, AEW money? What's your Venmo? I talk about them every week. It's at Zachary Dash Coleman Dash One. Hey, everybody send <laughs> at Zachary Dash one dollar. Coleman one dollar. Dash one. One dollar. One dollar. If, if you can hear this. Send him a dollar. Okay, he's laid up with gout for God's sake. I mean, he's got. Come on, gout. Tony Khan. I, <laughs> I, 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 I talk about you like you're the Booker of the Century every I mean, every week. Thank you. There's, there's the first confession. Are you not ready to confess? But I, I miss what he said. What do you say? I'm not lying. I'm not lying, but I also could use some money. That he, oh. that he, basically is a, a Tony Khan AEW mark. No, I'm not a Tony Khan AEW. You don't want to admit it now? I mean, you can if no. you want to. Nobody's going. Nobody. No. Nobody's going I, to judge you for it. Well, I caught some shit on Twitter last week about really? me saying that context. Oh, and then that, that, that like if 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 you guys don't agree that context matters, grow the fuck up because it does. <laughs> That'll do it for our three count. Don't fucking stare at me. I'm looking at you. Three. Don't be mad that you get defensive. Okay, everybody. NJPW had some injuries this week, some very unfortunate injuries. Be, uh, like, I would say uh, two of their biggest. One of five stars. Yeah, one uh, most unfortunate, one obviously coming back. Uh, we'll start with the most unfortunate being Hiroma with the torn pack. Um, Terrible. Uh, Guy was on 
Yeah, I was on a tear, though. And that, I was saying that he was having match of the night, dare I say, match of the year um, candidate matches pretty much from the start of 2021 on. But he is the division. I don't want to say, see, that's why I don't. They have not I agree said with what they're doing. Do- they have not said what they're doing with the belt yet. No, right? they actually they did. Uh, I watched it this morning. This morning's show is basically going to break down to where. Um, let's just first things first. Spoiler alert, everybody! If you didn't watch the show, start going away from this for only the next five or ten minutes. Um, this morning's show, the main event was um, shit. Suzuki Goon versus ELP and Ishimori for the tag titles. Suzuki won, right? No, Suzuki Goon wins. Um, I'll let you watch it for yourself. But the post match has Bushi, ELP, and Desperado in the ring, so they're going to have a triple threat match for the vacant junior heavyweight title. Um, I get. I'll just say this: Everybody knows I love New Japan. I love New Japan. Like people love WWE, people love AEW. Zach, so New Japan is my thing. So I will call it. You a say, little more. You say to Zach like he's an AEW mark. Like he it's is. A, like it's a terrible thing though. Well, I'm a New Japan mark. Like it's a pejorative. I'm fucking with him, man. Wait, so if. You're an NJPW mark, yeah, and he's an AEW mark, yeah. What am I? Mm. I, yeah, that's. Say, I don't know. I, I'm. I would like to think you're leaning. My you're way. a menage a trois kind of sort. <laughs> Maybe I'm a. Have you guys ever thought about this? Maybe I'm a Zach and Jason mark. That was a great question for a dinosaur. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe. Um, I'll just say this. For New Japan, I think two of the biggest problems that they have is the tag division and the junior division. In this case, we'll focus on the junior division. Hiromu, I thought, was wrestling a little too much. Naito is the same way, and that's how Naito, unfortunately, he got hurt leading up to the Intercontinental title match with Ibushi where... Nagata kind of rolls over his leg and nicks his knee up, and he's he misses four matches. And God bless Nido, he comes out and he's apologizing to the crowd because Nagata either messed up or you know didn't do the right thing. Whatever, doesn't matter. Nido ends up getting hurt. He, I felt bad for Nido because he had to come out and was like, you know, hey, I missed four matches. I'm sorry I missed these four matches, but it's still the bill to hey Zach. It, News alert, Jason felt bad for Naido. <laughs> that said, <laughs> my problem with this build for uh, Castle Attack, at least for this weekend, is I think there's a lot of, and I know you're going to love this, there's a lot of these matches where we're having Hiromu wrestle in matches that he has no re- business wrestling in, Naito the same way, where now the big name guys are starting to get hurt. Now, I'm not sure if this is a scenario where they're not wrestling as much as they used to or it's just wrong place, wrong time, but maybe the other night, maybe we should have a little less pre, pre, big show pre-matches where a build or two should be enough versus every night we have the same variety of matches. Now, I'm not, I'm not like you, Jason. Like, I don't watch wrestling all day, all the time. Well, you got a wife. You got a dog. You got a life. But I have like a couple designated designated days where I watch a bunch of wrestling, you know, basically Thursdays. But I also watch Elimination Chamber live. I turned on NJPW Saturday night just because I have the channel and I haven't watched it in a while and I was, you know, feeling okay. Yeah. I, I wanted to watch some stuff. Feeling a little nostalgic, if you will. I went through a bunch of Hiromu matches. And he's probably one of the five best wrestlers on the planet. Like, <laughs> I'm not disagree with you. I mean, you can nitpick if you want to, but he's pound, in the, let's let's class five by saying pound for pound. Well, he's in the conversation. 
Well, he does every single match fucking rules. It's it's full board, no question about it. And I think maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe the part of the problem is that they're putting him in, in like I said, matches that there's already a bill for it. We didn't need to build the I junior would, tag team. I would title literally match. watch him wrestle anybody though. Anybody. I hope he back he's, he's back great. to me. I mean the person who I want to watch great. him wrestle the most is two thousand two Kurt Angle. Ooh. <laughs> it would be insane. That would be a, that would be Hiromu versus O two Kurt Angle? Yes. But I want to watch it in Japan. Oh yeah, duh. Yeah. I mean, yes. I want I mean, I want to watch in my basement. And then the comfort of your own crib. <laughs> Three fourths drunk yeah, right. and smoking the smoking bowl. Yeah, I'd say God That's forbid I have me. to live or leave this joker. Um right. this is a true story though. Hold on. My uncle called my dad the other day. And my uncle This is recently? Yes. This week. And he said, uh, your uncle Rich wants to do a rest or he wants to do a podcast. And my uncle Rich is a deacon, so he does a bunch of Catholic stuff. <laughs> I know. He hasn't heard this, has he? I go, oh God. I go, yeah, I talked to him. At, my Aunt Jerry passed away last year, and I talked to Rich at the luncheon afterwards. I was like, yeah, I can. And Uncle Rich was like, well, when do people listen to it? I was like, whenever they want. He was like, yeah, but when do they have to turn the radio on? Oh, no. I, and he just did. Yeah, he's oh, se- no. he's did 77 he, did, or something. Did he do the knob motion? <laughs> I don't know if he did the knob motion, but I just did. <laughs> and then he goes, uh, so my dad called me the other day, and he goes, uh, Uncle Rich wants your number. He listened to your podcast. He thought it was pretty good. <laughs> I go, oh, I go, oh my God. I go, Uncle Rich. He's like, yeah, he was over at Steve's house. Steve's my cousin. They might be listening to this right now, which I hope they are. But <laughs> I can only imagine my Uncle Rich listening to this oh, podcast. Geez. I go, hey, Dad, what do you say about it? And Dad goes, uh, he just didn't know you liked wrestling that much. <laughs> <laughs> we were just going to stick with, you like wrestling a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that loud boy guy? That's oh, he, great. he thought you were my butler. Uh, <laughs> so, sorry I cut out that conversation. Virgil. I just had right? I had I had to put that story on the podcast because there's no way they listen. Uh, Even if they listen to it, there's no way they listen to no, it. There's two no, there's hours. Yeah, that's what I say. They are not listening. No, they're gone. Point. Um, anything else that we want to say about Big Show or, or NGPW? Uh, I just want to say you're right about Hiromu. He's a mega star. I kind of unfortunately, whenever he was gone with the broken back. The, the division was essentially just in a holding pattern waiting for him to come back, and it's probably just going to happen again. Um, this is just a thing with the junior title. In New Japan, unfortunately, uh, it's just like there's a definite separation. Like it, It's almost like NXT and main roster. Like There's the idea of moving up, right? That's why Will Ospreay is like putting on this weight and stuff. And Hiromu was kind of there to break that barrier down. And he wanted to headline Tokyo Dome with the junior title. And a lot of times, junior title is the best match on the show, you know. But, um, but yeah, huge bummer. And um, hopefully Hiromu can come back stronger than ever because the dude's an absolute megastar. I mean, don't get me wrong. I agree with that totally. But this weekend, you do have Kenta Mox. You do have Naido. um Ibushi, you got G.O.D. versus Yoshihashi and Goto. So, I mean, there's plenty of things to to kind of look forward to. I'm looking forward to uh, Yano getting whipped like a government mule by Chase Owens. So, I mean, these next three days at least, New Japan-wise, should be good to go. No, uh, you can't. No. I was no. trying, to turn, your, <laughs> trying to turn on your microphone while you were talking about Yano like that. No, I'm getting that in quick. Uh, I didn't know Mox and Kenta was this week, and I am looking forward to that. I believe that is uh, Saturday night on NJAPW World. Um, it's either 10 or 9 Eastern, so you can go from there. And then on that same night, they'll start um, the last two matches of Castle Attack. I think that's... Uh, Ooh, I think that's Tanahashi Okada, not Tanahashi Okada, 
but Tanahashi Okan, I think Okada and Evil are on that you same You cannot match as see well. that I am getting ready to hit this. This no, is close BFR. My eyes. Okay. And you ahead. just keep talking and talking and talking. I'm getting ready to hit this. Tell me to shut the fuck up then. Well, that would, this is what this is supposed to do. If you see me this with my eyes closed. If this motherfucker. Hold on. Explain it to me again. Sorry. If you, if I see you. Then just tell me, Jason. This shut. is banned from ringside. Sorry. To that motherfucker didn't, mean to, again. didn't mean to do that. Yeah, you I'm guys need to leave the room. You need to throw something at him. <laughs> No, as I say, I'm trying to keep my uh, social distancing away from. But we got some bir- we got some birthdays this week. Uh, Sean O'Hare, R.I.P. Uh, would have been 50 this week. Maria Canellis is 39. Congratulations, Maria Canellis. I hope she's having fun with her newborn. Uh, Rick Flair is 72. Pentagon Junior is 36. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, the OG, mm. is 68. Norman Smiley, the OG, is 56. Mike Tanay is 66. Booker T is 56. Big E Langston, or Big E, is 35. Emma, Emmalina, I forget what her other name is. Her real name? Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. What is it? Did, did she have a real name? Emma, Emmalina. She went by something else when we saw her. Tanil Dashwood. Yes, Tanil Dashwood. Thank you. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, the aforementioned, is 34. Lance Cade is 40. Justin Gabriel is 40. Debra, this, this might be like our best like birthday situation ever. It's a like, pretty, hu- it's a pretty huge week, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, when you throw in Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat, what was nine months and ago? And Pentagon Junior. and Booker T. and Kyle O'Reilly. That's a pretty huge one. What, what was nine months ago? So I mean, it, there there had to be like a lot of fucking going on nine months ago. I mean, as somebody who was born nine months and one day after Valentine's Day, I have no comment on this. Except to, say, except to say that my parents really loved each other. That my dad really made a night out of it. Right? We He's like, here we are, thing. Janine. I'm 26. I'm horny as fuck. We're going to do the damn thing, girl. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you what? <laughs> my dad was 15 years older than me what? right now Dude, when, he, when he conceived me. Which means that if he walked into my bar, I'd look at him and be like, can I see your ID? fucking ID? <laughs> Damn right. Give me your 26. ID, you fucking little <laughs> right. dork. Uh, Justin Gabriel is 40. Deborah is 61. And Hanson from War Machine slash War Raiders slash Viking Raiders. R.I.P. I know you're not dead, but goddamn, right. you can fucking work. Miss him. <laughs> Justice, dare I say, karma comes in amazing ways. Sometimes I turned on the, I turned on the wrong one. <laughs> hey, everybody! For Jason Cornelius Bell, Good for Zach you, Bowman, for Murray the Merman, Murray for Going Lucha Chris, for F and B Eatery, check, 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 check. for Bill's Beard Company. Check. I am Bill Veggie. Check. Everybody, Black Lives Matter check. and Boo the Heels. Boo. Oh, it doesn't even stop yet. <laughs> no. I thought we were so close to being Oh, done. no, you pissed the wrong one. Uh, Nobody's listening anymore. <laughs> Nobody's listening anymore. I know. Uh, I got to make some bets on NBA stuff. I mean, it, the, the show is done. We're not, put, we're not putting this out there. <laughs> it's like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Go home. <laughs> Good pod. Over. Good pod, Zach. To be, be careful, pod. man. I'll see, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, Zach, for sure. Zach, we're not taping anymore. What's your most uh, used word on Pornhub search? Um, let's see. Let me think. I'm trying to give you a real answer. <laughs> What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, That'd we're st- like a joke answer. Yeah, we're st- well, we're still taping. So <laughs> so don't taping. Say <laughs> I was waiting for you to be like, "Don't." Do- I'm sitting there, we're like, "He's getting ready to say some shit." We <laughs> see you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Be careful.